Boom! Welcome! Thank you, to thank Filipino you. To Filipino Garage, we have Rich Bustos and Kevin Reber here. What's up, what's up? Um, two Represent. homies. How do you two know each other? High school? High school. Yeah. High school, uh, South City? Yeah. Okay. Oh. yeah. No, no, no. I, w- I went to El Camino. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I went to El Camino too, and then um, we were both on the wrestling team, and that's just how, yeah, we knew each other. Yeah. Oh, you wrestled too, Rich? I wrestled too, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then we both do jujitsu. And then it just c- kind of recently, we started hanging out a lot more since we both do like videography stuff. And uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And now he's uh, Kevin's trying to become a software engineer, so I'm trying to help him out with that as and well. And you are a software engineer. Yes, I'm a software engineer at LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. Because if I remember right, you did Year Up. I did, did Year Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Year cool. Up in 2013. I got my internship there, but I was doing IT work. But during my internship, I actually like I got to know some software engineers, and I started get to hang. Out. I was hanging out with them, and they kind of taught me software engineering on the side. Oh. And at the end of my internship, um, without doing any interviews, they decided to hire me, which was pretty crazy. As a software engineer. as a software engineer, but I didn't know anything about coding. So oh. it, it was, yeah, it was pretty crazy. So, uh, but you learned like on the job? I learned on the job. Damn. I, I want to say like three months into the job, like I didn't even know what I was doing. Really? And, uh, yeah, my manager knew. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a pretty crazy story. At like, LinkedIn. At LinkedIn. Oh. Yeah, they just really liked my demeanor. Um, I was going into the office super early, just learning how to code. And um, the director of web development or engineering saw that I was there every morning at 6 a.m. learning how to code. And at the end of my internship, he just decided to hire me. Dope. Yeah, yeah I've been the- there for seven years. Damn, because um, you also have a podcast. I have a, I have a lot of rich. things. Yeah. You have a lot of things going on. Yeah. But then I think I was listening to one of the episodes and you were talking about how you were at LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Then you went to like a small startup. Yes. And then you went back to LinkedIn. Yeah. So there's a term that um, in the Silicon Valley called boomerang, where oh. you leave the company, you kind of do your own thing or like join another company to see how it is. And then you come back to the company. Oh. So essentially, that's what I did. Um March of 2019, I left to go to a company called Keep Trucking. And uh, over there, I was doing ELD software, which is uh, electronic logging devices. So I would write software for that. And after about 10 months to a year, I decided to come back to LinkedIn. And I've been there ever since. Yeah. Oh, why'd you go back to the big, to the big uh, corporation? You know, I, I recently Let's just move got, this real quick, just the, so that... There, so right here. Does it sound, sound a little yeah, bit better? Yeah. 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 And then the, so the the camera can get your oh, your yeah, noggin sure. too. My noggin. All right, let's do it. Um, let's see. Your question was why did I come back? Yeah. Why did you go back to LinkedIn um, from the small? I got startup. married in August. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank How old are you? I'm 20. Shoot, I'm about to be 28 this year, so I'm 27 oh, right now. Okay. Oh, I'm older than you. <laughs> yeah. I'm older than you. You're 99 too. I'm You're 92. 92. Okay, cool, yeah, cool. 92. 92. So you got married when you were 27, just last I, year? Yeah, I got married when I was 27. Um, and the, the whole startup scene is like, it wasn't for me. I mean, I loved it. I was learning a whole lot. But, you know, I do miss the 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 free time I had. Like Kevin knows, I, I love, you know, creating YouTube videos. I love creating podcasts. Um, I like to do like finance. I like to invest. So a lot of my time was going to that startup. So I wanted to come back to a bigger company to, you know, to have more free time. But not to say that LinkedIn is giving me all the free time I want. It's just, it's a little bit um, less time consuming than being at a startup. Mm, yeah. Mm. And then at LinkedIn right now, you're still, you're doing your software. Yeah, I'm still a software engineer. Engineering. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So how was that transition to like learn everything? Like on uh, the job, you were learning all the yeah. languages yeah. to like program in? So all? I'm considered a, a front end engineer. Uh, front end is pretty much everything that you see on the screen. Yeah. Um, such as like when you go on Facebook, all the f- front end stuff. So uh, I, a lot of the languages that I write in is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And to be honest, like the first year, like, dude, I would, I would come to work, I would learn on the job. And then after I was done, I would take these classes on Team Treehouse. If you don't know what Team Treehouse is, it's pretty much like an online, uh, you wouldn't consider it a boot camp, right? It's more um, of just like an online tutorial. Yeah, it's yeah. self-paced. Now they mm-hmm. do have these things called tech degrees, which are kind of like boot camps, but mm-hmm. it's also self-paced. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an online learning platform, um, mm-hmm. all based on like technology and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, the whole tech scene. Yeah, so I was building projects at LinkedIn and also taking classes on Team Treehouse. And to be honest, like I still didn't know much until maybe it was like a year, a year and a half into the job where I started like picking up things and kind of knowing what to do. Um, and, but, you know, still to till this day, I still like face like, oh, I'm not good enough or uh, what's that term that people imposter, thought? Imposter, and, yeah, syndrome, imposter yeah. syndrome. Yeah, I mean, I still, I still face that today and I've been an engineer for seven years already mm. going to almost eight damn you know? yeah but i mean it's a it's, it's i mean i love it uh as of right now i'm helping kevin with uh him transitioning to uh, software engineering mentor and yes yeah, so, i mean <laughs> like yeah i think this is kind of what's helping me with fighting imposter syndrome since you know helping kevin with with coding and making my self worth like oh i could really i could really do this uh, since i understand it because kevin's doing like this whole industry change yeah dude yeah. went to school for architecture worked mm-hmm. right as an architect uh designer in an architectural firm mm-hmm. and then now you're doing this whole you did a boot camp uh, or you were doing a self-paced like on your own study yeah so i was using a bunch of um online learning platforms that were all self-paced but um, eventually I got to a point where I was like, okay, what's the next step? And I decided to enroll in a springboard. It's also um, an online boot camp, but it's a lot more rigorous. And that just started in January. So it's been about a month. Um, but yeah, what I really liked about you know, being in that environment is having the sense of community because that's what kind of keeps you on track. And, you know, it's one thing to just watch a video, but like actually talk about it and what you learned, it helps like, you know, retain like information and yeah. Yeah, I think that's what helped me too. Like me helping you or like teaching you helps me retain Uh like the stuff that I know. Yeah, Yeah, that's how, that's like, that's what they say about That's right. right. Like, if you want to master something, like teach it mm-hmm. and yeah. like learn, because uh, you kind of uh, cement the lessons mm-hmm. when you're like explaining it to other people. That's why when I started going to the kids' jujitsu class, I realized, damn, I don't know shit, yo. <laughs> <laughs> like to explain things, I was like, oh my god, this is taking yeah. forever for me yeah. to explain little concepts. <laughs> I didn't realize that I haven't, I hadn't like enunciated or like said it out loud Mm -hmm. in a way before it was just like doing things Mm -hmm. uh naturally or like what i've done just by habit right because usually you're just listening 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 (laughs) in classes and then once now you're on the other end Mm -hmm. and teaching it you realize what you actually know Mm -hmm. and where you lack knowledge in, right? Yeah, I think they they say like, if you can't explain it in like layman's term, you don't know it well or Uh, something like that. uh, Yeah, uh, uh. Yeah, like I'm I'm still having trouble with like all the like easy terms and stuff. Uh. Yeah. And, but you're helping Kev right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. I mean, somewhat like, um, like we just had a yeah. session. So is he gonna get ten percent of your? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no so, so I actually I referred know. him. So if he gets the job, I get a little referral bonus. So oh, I'm, you get I'm, a yeah. referral bonus yeah, too? So I'm, man, I'm hoping Kevin gets the job. Yeah. Oh yeah. damn, yeah. that's cool that they Me do too. that. If yeah. you refer someone and then they yeah. get in, you get a little bonus. Yeah, I mean, because the the industry is so, like, it's so um, competitive, right? So yeah. they're just trying yeah. to attract talent. It is crazy uh, to think about the tech industry mm-hmm. here in the Bay, right? But could you give me a little um, perspective on your side? Because you came throughout through Year Up, which mm-hmm. is specifically a program that targets like communities Under- of color or mm-hmm. underserved, underrepresented yeah. folks and gets them into like the tech, tech world. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, man, it's... I, you know, growing up, I didn't know much about the tech industry until I went into Europe. Mm. Like the whole Silicon Valley thing. Like I never really heard about that. Mm. Um, you know, going to high school, after high school, I, I want to be a firefighter. And I also want to be in the Air Force. I had like all these like connotation of what I want to be when, when I uh, grow up. But like being in tech was something I never really thought of. Pause real quick. Yeah. You were born here? 
I was born in Daly City. I still live in the in same Daly house. City. That I was, I was uh, born you're born in Seaton? Seaton Hospital, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Rest and in the- peace, Seaton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Seaton. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Um, yeah. And then you went to El Camino High. Yes, I went to El Camino okay. High School. And then did you go straight from high school to Europe? No, actually, I went to Skyline Community College. Oh, okay, I actually cool. wrestled at Skyline. Oh, for, you wrestled for, at Skyline? Yeah, yeah, okay. for, for a year. Oh, then just come through to FTCC, bro. Yeah, that's yeah. where all the I got, Skyline that's what I tell wrestlers. <laughs> I, know, I went there for a bit But dude I, Like Oh man I hope uh, Darren isn't listening But like I hate the parking over there Yeah man. it's bad It's, it's bad. bad It's yeah. bad yeah, yeah. It's bad It's but, good on the open mat days Sundays uh, They're good actually mm, okay, uh, But okay. yeah During the night time And all that is bad Yeah but uh, No I, I train at uh, Lannis Day Which is in Mountain View Which is right uh, next to LinkedIn uh, Oh yeah. okay, yeah, okay Okay Yeah so Yeah, so, yeah You there. did Skyline And then how oh, did you Skyline? Transition to the whole year So uh, you know I was a little lost um, I think like a lot of people right off right out of high school they kind of don't know what to do so I went to Skyline because I, you know I saw most of my friends go to like these you know four-year colleges and so I went to Skyline just to you know kill time I was wrestling and uh, on my way to work I was at the time I was working at Radio Shack and uh, not Jamba Juice Surf City at Ceremony mm-hmm. and um, on my way to work I actually heard an ad on the radio and the catchphrase was like get paid to go to school and that kind of caught my attention oh. and, and it was year up so going through the year up program you actually get paid to take these classes which is uh classes in uh informational technology which is short for uh, long for it oh. so when i went to orientation one of the things that they showed like on the screen was like you the people who came out of this program work at google who work at facebook and on the video it had like these students eating free food and I was like oh okay this is I definitely have to try to get into this into this program food. so I went through the um, I went through orientation and then I wanted to apply and like the the application was super rigorous you go through like six different interviews um, and they you know check background checks and your the household incomes needs to re, it, sh- it shouldn't surpass a, a certain, certain amount certain amount and luckily like my my parents parents you know I, I love them to death but you, they don't really work prestigious jobs my dad is a parking attendant and my mom is a um like an office office manager so i met the criteria of getting into the program um so i got in for six months they teach you about it you take these classes and the following six months you're put into an internship mm. and luckily i got my internship at linkedin mm. and at linkedin i was a i think the role was called uh, tele- telecom engineer and pretty much it was it was a nicer way of saying you fix cell phones so as an IT person I was fixing employees cell phones and you know throughout that six months I kind of felt like you know I could do a lot more than what I was doing so um, during my internship I met uh, software engineers I told them that I was through I was in the year up program and you know I'm only here for six months but I want to learn software engineering and I met an engineer who would give her time to teach me software engineering stuff and I was hanging out with her almost every single day and she introduced me to more engineers and through that, it got so big that the director of engineering actually knew about me. He knew that I was this kid that was learning how to become a software engineer. And at the end of my internship, he just wanted to hire me. He saw like I had a lot of potential, even though like, I mean, I didn't have a like a, a proper interview, but I would talk about engineering to him. And like he saw that I was like super enthusiastic about it. And he just decided to hire me after six months, full time position, Damn. salary. Um, and keep in mind, like I didn't know anything like I, I was I was, te- I, I was taught all these stuff. But like if you told me to build a Web page, I wouldn't know how to do it. Oh, yeah, damn. it was crazy. Yeah. And how old were you? Like 20? I was 20. Yeah, I was. In the year up program, I was 19, and then I got hired when I was 20. So I was the youngest engineer at the whole company. Yeah. Who didn't know how to engineer. <laughs> Who didn't know how to do anything. Who didn't know how to do anything, yeah. So how did you eventually get up to speed? I mean, like, like I mentioned, like, I think the first year and a half, I was, I was struggling. But um, they gave me projects that weren't too hard like they wouldn't give me a project that like a senior engineer was doing like for example i think my first project was 
um, creating a really static page. Like, and with engineering, you, you make all these API calls, which, you know, talks to a backend. Kevin knows all about yeah. this stuff now. <laughs> but for me, so some of the projects was like, I didn't have to talk to an API. I would just pretty much just write HTML and CSS. And that was kind of like the building blocks. And as soon as I was done with the project, it would give me something slightly more difficult. After that, something a little bit more slightly difficult. And then after that, and just, it would just keep on continuing. And uh, it got me to a spot where I was really comfortable with writing code. And that wasn't until like maybe a year and a half in. Mm. Do you yeah. think they wanted to specifically invest in you for a certain reason? Why do yeah. you think? Yeah, I think... Um, I mean, I was, I would like to say that I was a hard worker. I was showing up at LinkedIn at like 6.30 a.m. almost every single day when I didn't have to. I wasn't getting paid to, to be there at 6.30. And me learning how to do software engineering stuff, I wasn't getting paid over time to do that. I, like, I was still doing my internship job, which was like fixing cell phones. But I would spend the time even before that to learn software engineering stuff. And I think they just really saw that like if, if this kid is putting that much effort into doing something that he's not even getting paid for mm. like why like what would happen if we actually started paying him to mm. do this so I, I would like to think that 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 was like their thought process but i mean ultimately i i honestly don't know why why do you have that work ethic where do you get that from um i mean i think there are a lot of things that wrestling for, for yeah, sure wrestling. yeah <laughs> so like like kevin knows like i was really even though i wasn't the greatest wrestler i loved wrestling what weight uh, class were you i was 152 and i'm like pushing like 170 right now <laughs> yeah doesn't look like it oh, no yeah no this is definitely this is yeah i'm pretty pretty heavy Christian, how much you weigh <laughs> 165 <laughs> well in, in jiu-jitsu i compete at 168 oh so, like, yeah, yeah okay okay um but so i think wrestling like i was really big into wrestling um that was, I think that was the only reason why my grade was okay in high school. I was like a C average. Um, so as work ethic goes, I th that plays into one was wrestling. And also, like, I felt after high school, I felt a little embarrassed because all my friends got to go to these four-year mm. university. Mm. Um, I kind of wanted to prove, prove myself. Mm. I, it, was, it was crazy because there was one time, like, this is my best friend, and I was actually one of his... Um, What's that thing called in during weddings? Best groomsman. Oh, groomsman. Best no, not best man. Groomsman. Yeah. Um, so I was his. I was actually one of his groomsmen. And uh, when I told him that I wanted to get into computer science, the first thing he said is like, "Dude, that might be a little too hard for you." Dang. And that kind of that that kind of took me back. <laughs> And um, luck. This was before I found out about the Year Up program. Uh, oh yeah, and, young groomsman. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. So he told me that oh, before. Before, okay, before okay, I went okay. to Europe. No, okay, he got okay. married last year. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Oh, but so you're also friends. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. yeah. We're still best friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're still best friends. But um, yeah, so he said that to me. So I always had this, you know, mindset. You know, I was at Skyline Community College. All my friends were at these four-year university. I just really wanted to prove myself. And once I got that opportunity, it was like it was it was time for me to just go heads in uh, yeah and that's kind of uh, like where the mentality comes from um there's another dude that i knew from um uh skyline mm -hmm. and then i don't see him for a few years and i see him at phil's and he was like oh i'm starting a year program and then mm -hmm. like a year later i see him at phil's again <laughs> 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 and he was like oh i'm on facebook now i was like cool that's uh, dope oh he 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 works at phil's no no, no no okay he i just saw him oh but okay, okay yeah he now works at facebook but oh. he just went through <laughs> i thought oh, he was like, like oh, you're still here oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. We just yeah. see each other yeah, for, yeah, at Phil's yeah. oh, okay. for some reason. That's like yeah. the spot. And then, yeah, just to see him from same thing, mm -hmm. Skyline, then year up, actually. Yeah. And then now he's at Facebook. Uh, I don't know the specific job, but still, that's a good trajectory yeah. from there, right? Now that you're, you've been in it, right? What do you see within the tech industry in terms of the mission of Year mm -hmm. Up? Like their goal, right, mm -hmm. was to bring more, uh, say, underrepresented yeah. folks yeah. into the tech industry, youth. right? And one mm -hmm. of the criticisms of the tech industry mm -hmm. is that it's not, quote unquote, that diverse, diverse yeah. right? Uh, yeah. What do you see from within? Yeah, so right? I th the biggest goal for Year Up is closing the the opportunity gap. So this is, you know, having students 
who don't have the the resources to get into you know companies like Facebook, LinkedIn, um, you know companies like that. So what they're trying to do is show these companies that these students do have what it takes to be in these companies. Like for the longest time. Before, you know, Europe was even introduced, I, man, I had like coworkers who went to Stanford, who went to Berkeley, uh, shout to Berkeley, because I know you guys both went to Berkeley. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, like I was working next to these, these people and there was still, there's still something like part of me was like, man, like, do I deserve being here? Uh. And I think what Europe is trying to do is trying to, to, to remove that connotation mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of like what I'm seeing uh, what Europe is doing and uh, yeah do you see a lot of it a lot of change up like oh yeah from, um, the, the where it's not just the elite yeah. like recently well you know what it's that's hard to say because a lot of the people that I see who who maybe didn't have that resource is there because of programs like Europe but you know I don't typically see employees who had the same background that didn't have something like Europe or oh. or the Boys and Girls Club or things like that. Oh, so there are but, other programs that are yeah, getting people yeah, yeah, into yeah. that you've, you've seen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, okay, okay. Yeah. So what you're saying is uh, the, they are getting in, but it's because of Us, these other programs, programs and yes. like specific support programs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's like kind of opening the door for them. Yes. Well, you know, we're actually going to be changing that. So one of the main reasons why I went back to LinkedIn is because we're building a new product called Underconnected Youth. And essentially what we're trying to do is connect compassionate connectors with these underconnected youth. So for example, if I'm a compassionate connector, I want to help students from the Europe program or people from like the boys and girls club to come into these like big corporations. And so the product that we're building is, is doing that. Um, and I'm kind of like the, one of the few engineers who are on that team and actually the person who's kind of in charge of this, of this program reached out to me while I was at keep trucking at the startup. So yeah, I was r really, really fortunate to come back, especially being on this team. Oh, at LinkedIn. Yeah. so that person reached out to you. Yes. I was like, Hey, we're doing this. We'd mm -hmm. like you on, like they poached you back. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, exactly. But you know, at that time I was kind of like looking to come back. So it just so happened, like how mm -hmm. it all worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. LinkedIn is huge, man. Oh, like, yeah. like I mean, now that I'm on the job hunt, like yeah. it's all duh, 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 LinkedIn. Yeah. Got all the jobs and everything popping yeah. up there, and then mm -hmm. that's all what all the freaking uh, student orgs up in uh -huh. Berkeley always do. Your LinkedIn headshot event. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we do. We have that at, at on site too. Uh, like, LinkedIn, yeah. 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 <laughs> this guy Kev yeah. got a good picture of me with the 45 oh, degree yeah, angle. Yeah. Oh, iPhone Arms too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, Kev's a photographer, so he should be taking your picture. Yeah. 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 I was like, this is good. This is good. Yeah, I just saw the wall. I'm like, yo, Christian, let me get your picture, man. You got that suit on. Looking good. Yeah. You need that for the professional look. <laughs> Well, that's cool. It's a uh, it's cool to um, kind of hear because I know that there's an issue of uh, or a lot of people from these communities of color may not envision themselves mm -hmm. right as a software engineer, like to just to think like, oh, this is a possibility, mm -hmm. right? And then it's cool to hear that you've been in it for a good number of yeah. years, almost a decade. Yeah, already. you're closing in on a decade of working in I there. Oh man, uh, hopefully, I love LinkedIn. But but, you know, another passion of mine is like investing and I definitely don't see myself, you know, being an engineer my, my whole life. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, So you um, think I do love it. Though. Like, I, I love LinkedIn and I love being there. But, you know, I, I also value like family time, especially since, you know, I'm newly married. Uh, I have a big family. I'm Filipino. So I have like all my cousins are here in Daly City. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So Dope. like it's, yeah. So the family parties are lit. Yeah, fam family parties are lit. <laughs> I mean, like, I think, Kev, you always ask me to shoot on the weekends, but I'm like, I'm telling you, like, oh, no, I have a family party Cousins, this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Your house isn't the one with the garage open all the time, is it? 
It might be. It. So, do you have a Do you have a TV in the garage? No, I don't. No? I don't. Okay, I don't. Okay, I, don't. I think not. I know what, you're, what how she's yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, with the manong. Over yeah, there? Okay, yeah. Okay, but okay. My, the garage is somewhat open because my dad loves to clean cars, oh. so he's always there, just like just chilling, cleaning oh, cars. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then, so you said you're into investing. Yeah. Are yeah, you yeah. saying that you're looking into a career that's more on on that? Yeah, so what I essentially love to do is I, I love to help people with you know investments and because uh, I just feel like you know people our age don't really know yep. about investing yep, or yep. how to like think long term and luckily for me like I grew up knowing about like stocks and investing because my dad was really into it uh. like my, my dad you know even though he doesn't have like a really like sleek job he's just a parking attendant he's been an investor and he's been playing stocks since he was as far as I could remember but like so when I was younger, when I used to sleep in the room, I would always like wake up at six thirty because my dad would watch the market because that's when the market opens here mm. in 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 our time in our uh, time zone. So knowing that when I turned eighteen, I started I opened my my stock account, my stock brokerage account, and through that it was I think it was Fidelity, and um, you know I put a little money away, I invest in stocks, and I I felt like. I felt like I got to a point where I don't have to depend on money too much just because of the investment uh, strategy that I've been doing since I was a lot younger. Mm. So, and I just feel like, you know, uh, especially millennials, they, you know, once they get money or if they have a big salary, the first thing that they want to do is like move out of their parents' house, live in the city, have their whole paycheck go to rent. But, you know, for me, when I start working at LinkedIn, you know, I like, I, I don't want to sound like a bragger, but when I, got hired when I was 20 years old, I was already making, making six figures. And through that, like, of course, I kind of want to move out, but I knew that, you know, as, as an investor, I want to save my money and just kind of invest my money instead of putting it to rent. So through that, I was able to like purchase a house. I have tenants. Um, I play stocks. Uh, I got into crypto a little bit. Um, and you know, mutual funds, ETFs, everything like mm, that. And mm. I feel like I'm at a point where like, you know, knock on wood, like I say, lose my job tomorrow. I feel like I'll still be financially stable just because I'm f financially literate. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's super important, dude. Yeah. And I don't think it's just our generation. Mm -hmm. I think it's almost like our demographic oh, yeah. as Filipinos here. Like mm -hmm. if you break it down a lot of is working class background, mm -hmm. right? And we're not taught any financial mm. education financial literacy yeah. is zero yeah even if you like what's even worse is it's zero in the older <laughs> generation yeah. right like yeah. i've almost had i've had to have conversations with mm -hmm. the older generation about like yo watch out for this loan i've had family i've had a friend's family lose their home because of a reverse mortgage oh, yeah. that like Damn. they're because of predatory lending mm -hmm. especially they target like older yeah. filipino like home owners yep. who've yeah. had their homes from like the 70s mm -hmm. right 60s and in the area but then they're enticed by the refinancing oh, that gets yeah, you more money uh, up front but mm -hmm. then they lose the equity in yep. it and things like that and mm -hmm. it's, it's dope to hear because um, actually I reached out to you because I read your article mm -hmm. on your website on financial independence oh yeah right that's right the, on, that's you. the one uh, Kevin sent it to our little group chat mm -hmm. and then um there's dope shit there oh, right, right you're, yeah you. you're the, you. you were saying the house that you own mm -hmm. it's actually in vegas yes right? it's in vegas and then yeah. you rent that out i rent it out yeah. that's yeah. a yeah. smart ass move yeah. right yeah. instead of like you were saying paying mm -hmm. rent rent yeah. to another landlord yeah. who's most probably not filipino yeah right yeah and the money is now not circulating mm -hmm. in your community anymore, yeah right yeah and, and then i'm oh, sorry mm, i was what, gonna say i just want to say up front like i still live with my parents and i'm married like I, there should there should not be a bad connotation of living with your parents i hear this all the time where like my my coworker would be like oh you know why are you still living with your parents and like i like why not live with my mm -hmm. parents I'm, i don't have to pay for rent yeah how crazy is that? And you know, they're, um, I'm not allowed to, okay. am I allowed to say pute? It's like them who's like, dude, like right when I was 18 or right when I got a job, I moved out of there. Like I did yeah. not want to, yeah. like they don't even help their parents out. Like yeah. for me, yeah. that, I feel like that's such a big thing. Like when I started getting paid as a software engineer, I did everything I could to like help out my parents. Like I would help them with the mortgage if they needed it. I would, you know, I'd cheat them out to eat or like if they need to rent a car, then, you know, but you know, th those people don't, 
they don't do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. It's a cultural thing, yeah, which yeah. kind of it sucks yeah. because there's because that's also the larger society that we're in in terms of expectations comes from kind of the putti culture yeah. that's very disconnected from the Filipino way of mm-hmm. kind of being in alignment still with your parents, yeah. right? And in this case, right, supporting being at home and then still contributing in different ways, right? Mm-hmm. It might not even be financial. What if it's just, I have friends who help with all the household things going on and it's only, it's their Lola's house, right? Yeah. And that's still part of, mm-hmm. that's economic value, right? But also it's not something that's respected, quote yeah. unquote, outside of our community, yeah. right? Which... I, I appreciate that call out for like putting that down because yeah. bro this this dude drives a Tesla it's good to be at home yeah, that's what I'm saying true, man yeah. but uh, I but the principle behind it is the support of the family mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. that's super important yeah right yeah, yeah. and are you aiming to like retire them yeah yeah that? for sure well you know actually the house that I purchased in Vegas was essentially for them mm. but my parents said that they're not they're not going to retire anytime soon mm. they're still pretty young my dad's like 55 my mom's 53 um so they're not gonna retire anytime soon just yet so they actually told me like why don't you rent it out build some equity on it um and just you know play the play the long game and Mm, mm. you know with that kind of parents you have to you like i respect them so much that like whatever they want i'm I'm gonna do Mm. and like like just looking at it now i mean it's the best it was a good decision Mm, to do mm, it mm, yeah mm. Yeah. so are you saying you kind of want to go into like financial advising i you know yeah so i was gonna bring up like so a lot of the financial advising like i i definitely want would like to do it but at the moment i'm doing it all for free especially for people who are not financially illiterate um like i don't see myself profiting off of this i'm more i just want to do it to just get it out there because you know like you know i have cousins who don't who are not very financially literate um and i feel like you know we're at the prime age of starting now for compound interest to start Mm -hmm. applying Mm -hmm. like what we have on our side, special, especially for my cousins and millennials, is time, mm. right? So the best thing to do is start now, and I kind of just want to get them there right now. Yeah, I there to bring it back though uh, to culture mm-hmm. though. I think there's a lot more. I'll give this to them. Put the culture, especially if you're a little upper middle class, mm-hmm. that do talk about stocks and oh. do talk about investing at a younger age for their kids, especially if they're wealthier. You'll have mm-hmm. I I think because I'm I also went to a wealthier high school in Palo Alto. Uh, I've had friends there, like their parents teach them about stocks. Really? Yes, oh. teach them about stocks. Tell them about investing, things like that. They'll even give their kid like, oh, uh, here's a certain amount of money for stocks right (laughs) like because they've been doing it in Mm -hmm. their generations Mm -hmm. um for a minute right Mm -hmm. and that's why uh, arguably wealth kind of stays in certain demographics Mm -hmm. right they'll have like oh i bought the jimmy a little business (laughs) on the side (laughs) i love that put that (laughs) voice dude (laughs) because because, and that's what sucks is because you come to working class communities there's almost none of that right Mm -hmm. because they're uh they're surviving on the day to day with the working of the of the wage jobs, mm-hmm. right service jobs. So I think it is very important to have these financial uh, educators mm-hmm. in a way, especially for our community. Yeah, no, and for sure. Because I have a friend. I'm not going to put their name on blast or, or their business out there, but this exemplifies mm-hmm. um, kind of the idea of knowing about money. Mm-hmm. Because his family uh, wanted to sell their house. Uh, and just collect the money now just cause mm-hmm. cause like oh we bought it at this amount and now it's <laughs> worth a million or whatever <laughs> and then but it's because everything else has it's risen really also yeah. in the area but your mm-hmm. cost of living has also risen mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. why not rent that house mm-hmm. out if yep. you have an access to another place mm-hmm. right and it was this back and forth back mm-hmm. and forth over and over again with the parents and the younger generation trying to implant these ideas mm-hmm. Right, but the older generation has kind of these uh, concepts of like, oh, equity in the house is yeah. the amount of money now that it's worth. Get it I now, get it yeah. now, yeah. right? Yeah. Rather than investing, so yeah. 
that it's it's good to it's good to see from someone younger, yeah. right, who's aware of that and try is trying to propagate yeah. those concepts and those ideas. Yeah, I right? think yeah, the goal for to be financially free is passive income, mm, mm. and you're not gonna get that by selling your house and getting all the equity. Yeah, mm. it'll probably last you a long time, but yeah, like what you mentioned, like renting it out and getting passive income that way is probably the best way. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. Mm. Kev is on his passive mm. income thing right yeah. now because he. He yeah. uh, challenged us uh, for I think we haven't locked it all down, down the uh, details, mm. but I think it's looking like end of the year challenge to see who can build the most amount of passive income streams mm. or be able to make the most money in terms of percentage based mm. on an initial investment uh, through passive income mm. and how that That's looks. And it's a consistent conversation of like oh what are different ways of mm -hmm. developing passive income mm -hmm. right and that's a shout out to uh richard kawasaki is it richard kawasaki is this is that Ro his name robert robert kiyosaki yeah, yeah, yeah. Kiyosaki. Yeah, yeah. Kiyosaki. Yeah, yeah. kiyosaki there you rich go rich dad poor dad rich yeah. dad poor dad which you mentioned <laughs> yeah so that was like the first book that i've ever read like when my parents got me into and my siblings like about financial literacy is it was through robert kiyosaki uh. we used to play like this board game called cash flow uh he had yeah. that game yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude you know i went on ebay to like buy a brand new version of it because the one that i have is like super messed up dude that's just like 120 dollars really? yeah. yeah i'm like while well, monopoly is like 10 dollars on amazon <laughs> I'm like, Fuck. maybe the sellers were like all right cash flow <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's legit make some cash flow with this game yeah. it had that little spinner yeah thing yeah, right yeah, yeah. 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 Thing, I remember yeah, the that. Cheese, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you have to put your assets in one column, <laughs> yeah. things like that, expenditures, <laughs> yeah. right? Liabilities yep. and all. Were you named after that? No, so our my name, it's it's funny story. So um I was the first boy in my in my family. So my parents were having a hard time to choose my name. And at that time, my my mom yeah, my mom's favorite TV show was Richie Rich. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so they named me after Richie Rich. That's a throwback. Yeah. I, I remember watching yeah. that cartoon yeah. a little bit. Yeah, that was my mom's favorite cartoon. And oh. like, I think it was like maybe two to three months before I was even born and they're like struggling like damn what should we name our son they were gonna name me like Nino which is uh, after the Santa, Santa Nino. Nino yeah and <laughs> they decided to go with uh, Richard Rich. uh, yeah. how many siblings do you have? I have one older sister and one younger brother Oh, yeah. and you're the oldest boy. I'm the oldest boy. Yeah, I have a younger oh, brother. Shout out okay. to the Bustos Bros. Uh, take a follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Y'all haven't put out a uh, a video recently, have you? Yeah, uh, yeah podcast? A, not have a podcast. So I kind of shifted away from the Bustos Bro podcast because oh, okay. my brother, his, his work schedule is like so off mm. compared to mine. What does he do? So he works. Uh, can you take a guess? Uh, he works. He works healthcare nurse. Yep, yeah, yeah. Uh, not go. a nurse. My <laughs> sister's a nurse though. Okay. <laughs> but he works in healthcare. He works at UCSF. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. What doing yeah. what? I I, I don't honestly know? don't know. Oh, my mom works at UCSF. <laughs> yeah. uh, Parnassus? Huh? Parnassus? Uh, uh, she was Parnassus. Okay. Uh, and then they moved to uh, office setting. There's yeah. another one here in uh, I think San Bruno or somewhere okay. around that. Oh man, that's yeah. a lot closer. But she was yeah, a lot yeah. closer. But she was driving to Parnassus like yeah. every day. Yeah. My know. my wife's a nurse. His her sister's a nurse. Her mom's a nurse. My sister's my sister's a nurse, and my brother works in healthcare. Yeah, our friend just got married, right? And uh, the fiance is a nurse. And then uh, he was talking about yeah. um, when they do the cash money dance and all that uh -huh. stuff. She's like, "Wow!" He's like, "Wow, this is nurse money. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one giving like hundreds. Like, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, These yeah, are your nurses' friends, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 And then he was opening up some of the the gift cards and yeah. stuff like that. Like, damn, this is a nurse. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah during out. my wedding, like I kind of knew who who were nurses because yeah. <laughs> yeah. they give the most, but they also drink the most. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know what's up with some of these nurses. Like they have, they have, they have, they have to let loose, thing. man. Yeah. They have a stressful job. Yeah. <laughs> I have even friends out in LA. I was like, it seems like it's the nurses who drink the most. Yeah, man. I guess it's a thing. It is yeah. a stressful. I, mean, I believe it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I get okay. So you're officially Filipino. Yep. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> My favorite food is didn't go on. Like, if there's no didn't go on at the party. It's like, dude, come on. Have you eaten at Baby's Eatery? 
in SF. Ooh, never even heard of it. The uh, Excelsior on mm. Mission Street. I believe it's the best dinogoan in the state of Do California. Do they have the pork ears though? Yeah, uh, they, crunchy uh, they pork have, ears uh, inside it. Yeah, like in the dinogoan. It's the lite. It's the it's like the innards. Oh, or yeah. So. See, that's yeah, 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 see, That's yeah. how I know. That, that's yeah, how my that's grandma good. makes it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I'm uh, my my dad is from Papanga, so oh. they 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 know how to cook. Oh, they know how to cook. Yeah. Your seasick. Does your family cook some seasick? No, they're not really big into seasick, but like the like the dinogoan, the kurkura, like all the, all that stuff. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. I suggest checking it out. It's yeah. my favorite. My Lola loves the dinogoan there, oh, okay. and then I buy it all the time. It's like a small hole in the wall. Mm. Three seater, uh, like Turo Turo spot Ooh. where the food is just all there, but yeah. they've been around for like 26 years. Oh, dang. Plus, That's crazy. Like, I never even heard about yeah, it. Yeah, it's hella good. That's my number one rec yeah. for like yeah. Dinuguan. Were, were you born and raised in Daily no, City? No, I was born in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, I only moved Daily City 2013. Oh really? Yeah, uh, huh. 2013 is when we got this house. Uh, we because my mom started working at Seaton. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, where's she what? about to go afterwards? Uh, f- what do you mean? Because isn't Seaton closing? Oh yeah, so she worked at Seaton, uh-huh. then she uh, transferred to Stanford, oh, okay. and then UCSF. Oh, so yeah, now she right, works right. yeah, at the yeah, UCSF. UCSF. Okay. Um, but Seaton was the whole reason why yeah. we moved here. I got a lot of the Filipinos. Yeah. That's the reason. You know, it's crazy because I just found out about this. But my wife, she's uh, she just graduated. She got her master's in nursing, mm. and uh, she was looking at a job, and she was kind of having a hard time. But she, I mean, she got a job like after a month. But yeah. she was saying that before. Or like I think in the in the seventies or or eighties, like s- daily city hospitals would actually call people from the Philippines to come here uh, to work uh-huh, here. Is uh-huh. that what happened with your mom? Like, did no. she get a call? Or? No, no, no. Um, I think she was just like uh, I don't know if she had a friend or somebody. Oh, okay. Um, like recruited her mm, uh, because okay. I think now for some reason also she has this headhunter that keeps on like getting uh, her like because yeah. she used to be working in um new york at mm. a hospital there then this headhunter just grabbed her put her over here mm-hmm. and it's a better location because all our families here west coast and then that same headhunter got her the stanford job she was like wor- she wasn't even job hunting mm. she was just like working and then that headhunter was like hey yeah. there's this job there i guess maybe that's Damn. their job as a headhunter yeah. recruiter yeah. they get they the get bonus paid. too yeah. Yeah. yeah and then she got her to stanford and then same one I think got her into UCSF gotcha. and so now like and slowly stepping up each time mm-hmm. right so uh, that's the reason why we ended up coming Daily City mm-hmm. and I've made it my home I love Daily City I, I wish I was City, here dude. earlier <laughs> I wish I found it yeah. like earlier I didn't know there were hella Filipinos here until yeah. I got here and I was like what mm. the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> like why is, like, is that a Filipino <laughs> restaurant I was so hyped yeah. because I grew up in a spot in LA where it's most Mostly Chinese okay. and Vietnamese, Latino, yeah. like that. And yeah. then I would drive like 30, 45 minutes mm-hmm. to go to a Filipino restaurant. Mm-hmm. Here is like everywhere. I'm yeah, spoiled. Man. I Got love it. Yeah, I go yeah. Jollibee every other day. Yeah. <laughs> I had Jollibee last night. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had some spaghetti yesterday. Oh my God. <laughs> That's really my guilty yeah. pleasure. Like yeah. I try to not eat fast food mm-hmm. and eat healthy, but sometimes I get the craving yeah. Yeah. for the two piece chicken joy with spaghetti. Oh. Oh my goodness and yeah. like that hits home and then and a jolly hot dog because mm-hmm. jo- jolly hot dog is for the hot drive dog. home so, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 i get a jolly hot dog and a two-piece yeah. so i'll eat the jolly hot dog while driving home yeah. and once i'm home i have the two-piece yeah. chicken joy and it works perfectly yeah. Dude, that's, that's so crazy how much you love daily city because i love daily city but my wife is from milbury oh. and it's like the people who live there are like especially the filipinos are like the whitest filipinos really so when she moved in with me in daily city she like hates the cold because Millbury that's like the cutting point of where it gets like yeah. hot oh yeah, okay. yeah yeah so like because that's where the the fog clears up so she d- dislikes Daily City the, yeah, but really? I love Daily City I like <laughs> every time I leave Daily City like when I have to sleep at her parents house I like I feel weak I get like <laughs> asthma attacks and I just like, <laughs> 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 you don't have to nebulize <laughs> you the fog yeah, yeah, yeah like the moisturizing day, I love Daily City man <laughs> <laughs> it would be so hard for me to uh, leave here yeah but yeah. you know wake up call is, is changing mm-hmm. a lot right um, oh Oh, yeah. Like in terms of a number of people moving in, yeah. which is a lot of 
non Filipinos. Yeah. Right? Uh, and like the gentrification mm-hmm. overflow is starting yeah. to hit Daly City. Dude, I've seen it like at Westlake. If yeah. you go to Westlake, man, since it got like remodeled, dude, there's so many Putep please people <laughs> there, dude. It's it's crazy, man. I was like, what happened, man? Even around here, the homie um grew up here in West Westbro. And then he's like, I went to. He's like, yeah. what the heck? This is the most like put there I've seen in this just the last five ish years. Yeah. Like it's been a change and you see I think it's also Working professionals who rent out here mm-hmm. is because it's cheaper than SF, things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. But yeah, it's lightweight changing, which I don't want to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we talk about economic shit too, mm-hmm. that's the same issue because yeah. people are moving out either to sell their homes, to go to like Hercules or Richmond, mm-hmm. Peniel, or Hayward, even East Hayward, Bay, yeah. or um, the businesses, right? There's not even the small mom and pops, right? Mm-hmm. They have kind of a basic business understanding, but it's not like a comprehensive economic framework like a Chinatown yeah. uh, or uh, a, a real solid chamber of commerce to maintain these Filipino owned businesses here mm-hmm. right and so that's that that's almost indicative of the lack of financial economic literacy for a whole group yeah. right for an ethnic enclave to survive where you go to like the Chinatown in Oakland or Chinatown in uh, SF and mm-hmm. you have all these thriving businesses five restaurants right next to each other <laughs> okay. but you're like how the fuck do they survive they're yeah. all Eating at each other's yeah. restaurants, they mm-hmm. all have their own other hustles just to maintain like themselves economically. Yep. Also, right. So I'm kind of hoping that we see more of that here in Daly City mm-hmm. and with like Filipinos and with other like business folks who who yeah. are who have that kind of framework, right? No, for sure. So we don't lose this. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. But I want to ask, uh, how do we keep Daly City minimalist? <laughs> oh, I, shoot <laughs> Daily City I don't know man Like a lot of Filipinos Are hoarders So they, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think There's a way to be A minimalist So uh, you are a minimalist Yeah right? Yeah, yeah. Could you speak to me A little bit about that Because yeah. I've only seen it On your website On yeah, your website yeah. <laughs> so, And uh, I've seen the video That you were packing mm-hmm. With your wife For your yeah. honeymoon Of one backpack yeah. uh, For the week Yeah right? no, Dude that's how I do it So it, it's funny Because like So all this stuff That I have Like my podcast My YouTube All started Because I wanted to talk more about minimalism oh and so that yeah. was the main thing that, that was really the main thing that's like oh. if you watch my very first youtube video it was about like my minimalist room um but how i got to become a minimalist is kind of a i guess kind of a long story but so during the time that i was working at linkedin like i felt like life life was really good you know i was getting paid a lot i was living with my parents so i had like virtually like no bills i was dating my girlfriend now wife at the time so on paper everything seemed really really good and i wasn't stressed out about work at all and there was this one day where i had this like huge panic attack Mm. um my heart was beating super fast um i felt like i was gonna faint and it kind of trickled down to like a lot of um like self i don't know how to explain but like i i thought i was sick all the time so it was it was like this weird feeling and getting all these anxiety attacks. I didn't see a doctor for that time. So you had multiple anxiety I had multi- attacks. Yeah, I had multiple oh. anxiety attacks. Um, I was getting probably anxiety attack like I, I want to say at least four times a week. Really? And I just I thought it was, I thought it was asthma. And you and you haven't ha- you hadn't had this before. I haven't had like, this before. Yeah. No no no. I mean I I think I had. Now looking back, I think it would. It trickled down to like maybe like maybe in high school when I would have would have this, but I never thought anything of it. But I was getting these um, anxiety attacks, and um, I didn't know what it was. And then I finally saw a doctor about it. I I was telling him like all my symptoms, like I was sweating, I had a hard time sleeping, and my heart would be beating really fast. I would get these headaches, and I swear, like I told the doctor, like I think I have cancer. I think I have like brain cancer or so, like a oh, tumor shit. or something. Yeah. And uh, I like I got checked out. They said that there's nothing wrong with you. Have you ever have you ever heard of um, having like anxiety disorder? And I was like so in disbelief of having an anxiety disorder. And uh, this had like this compound effect of uh, like me getting depressions because I was I, I kept thinking about these like when am I gonna get the next anxiety attack? And me thinking about that led me down to like this 
this depression hold. And I hate the word depression because, you know, I feel like it gets thrown out there a lot. But these were the symptoms or this is what the doctor told me. Like you have anxiety and you're having minor depression and we want to put you on these pills. And like I thought I was going crazy because like on paper, my life was looking really good. Like I mentioned, good job. How old were you around this? I was 22, 23. Yeah, I'm 27 now. So about four years ago. And um, so the doctor wanted me to get on these pills and I told him, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to like, I Googled a bunch of other things to help me fight like my anxiety. Um, Because I knew like I was watching these videos, like I knew I could fight it myself. And um, I found out about meditation. And if you look at my my blog, I have an article of me uh, doing meditation for a whole year. So meditation is a big part of my life. Every day? Um, I, I did do it every day. Now I... I try to squeeze it as much as possible. Um, I was, yeah, I need to get back onto my meditation. What kind? Program. Do you follow an app? No, do you I do? S- when I first started, I was using Headspace, but then mm. I found it like really weird, like a British guy speaking into my <laughs> ear. But so now um, I actually took meditation classes too in Santa uh, Clara. Uh. So I, I had teachers, but um, it, I got to a point where meditation was like my daily daily ritual. So I got into meditation. Um, I found out about mindfulness. And when I was on a Reddit channel, this was Reddit. I was on a mindfulness Reddit sub channel. Um, I found out that there was a, a documentary called the minimalist or minimalism. And I watched that documentary. It was on Netflix. And then, uh, I just totally adopted that lifestyle. This was in 2015. Um, so after I watched that documentary, I like, I it, like, it welded into me really, really well. So I just started adopting that minimalist lifestyle and kind of helped me. Maybe that's why I don't meditate as much because living a minimalist lifestyle kind of soothes me and I don't feel anxious and it declutters oh. everything that I have in my mind. And then you didn't have those anxiety I mean, attacks? I mean, I, I still have anxiety attacks. Like my well, my wedding, I had like an anxiety attack because I was getting married. But now, now that I'm like more mindful of what's happening... Like, I know how to, like, fight it. I know how to mm. accept it. Um, and minimalism is just, like, an addition to help me. An additional do, tool. Yeah, like additional that. tool. What happens? Do you get, like, r- r- ch- like your heart runs? Yeah, my heart like, runs. Like, I feel like my heart's about to explode. I feel like I can't breathe. I sweat. Do you get uh, super, like, mind running? Mind like running? Thinking? And, like, it's it's weird. Like, visual looks weird. Oh. Like, like almost t- like tunnel vision. It's really hard to explain. Oh. Yeah. So, I was getting this in 2014, 15-ish. I was, yeah, 22, 23. The reason why I'm asking is because... I'm, I don't know what the difference between a panic attack and anxiety oh. attack. Yeah. Because I had one like episode when I was in school uh-huh. and then where I was like get, feeling the heart yeah. r- run and I felt weird. I felt high. Yeah. I think that's what made me feel weird because yeah. I'm sitting in class and then I'm like overanalyzing my thinking. Like yeah. I'm si- thinking something. I'm like, why am I thinking that? And then we're like, huh, this is the same cognitions I have if I'm high, like yeah. on, on weed and I'm getting a paranoid trip on weed. Then I got <laughs> weirded out that I had those same thoughts when I was not on weed. I was like, I'm, I'm fucking in class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not high right now. Why am I thinking this way? Yeah. And it made me feel so weird. I started getting uh, uh, like I had to step out mm-hmm. uh, because my heart was racing and I yeah. had to drink water. And then yeah. I had a fucking presentation to do. <laughs> oh, and then so yeah, I was just that, I was like, this is so weird. Yeah. And then uh, my homegirl in class actually had to like, she was like, are you okay? And walked me to like my next class. And then I, I just had to sit down, call my sister and all that. And then, but it was weird because I've never had that like growing up. Yeah. But then same. I've had like one or two like episodes it was after when after I hit like 24 yeah, and stuff like that. That's, that's why I was yeah. wondering how old you were and <laughs> yeah. all that. And then I actually have a homie now who actually works in tech. Um, but I think he he's like 22 now, 23. But then like it was only around that time and working more in tech uh, that he started like having <laughs> just anxiety yeah. a little bit. Maybe it's just all the screens. Dude, I, the I, I honestly don't don't know because like like i mentioned like everything everything was good and i don't know i just always felt worried and i was feeling sad 
for no reason like there was times yeah. where i just start bawling out for no reason like i'll just be watching tv and it'd be like a comedy and then i'll just be i'll have like this immense feeling of sadness just mm. fall over me and then i just start crying and i like at that the, i think the first time i cried was the the following day i saw a doctor and then that's when they were telling me all these like stuff i was uh. like dude I, i'm not gonna take any medications so minimalism mm -hmm. was like one of the top tools that help you help me yeah the, uh. the, the yeah the top tools was well so the top tool was meditation meditation mm. already cured me it just so happened that when i was on these like meditation mindfulness forums on reddit where someone posted about this minimalist oh. documentary and then when i watched it i was like oh this resonates with me really really well so that's when i like adopted, adopted the it. lifestyle yeah. Oh, yeah. okay but yeah. all, but the practice that kind of helped you a lot during that time was the daily meditation yeah the daily meditation how long would you meditate a day uh when i first started off it was like five minutes because like dude i was like dude this is like when i was closing my eyes i was like this is so dumb <laughs> this is that was me <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. When we were doing uh, that one month, I would, yeah. like I would sit in my car right before work, and I'm like, "Oh man, I'm, I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I got to run or like you know yeah. stretch or something." We had but, a challenge yeah. where we had to meditate every day, uh -huh. uh, and then whoever didn't would pay like 20 bucks to this charity <laughs> that we. Oh, that's we, I'm yeah. trying to be in this. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We got yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When did we do that? I, some month I forgot. It was like uh, maybe March. Some, or, maybe well, March it was or. After, After the, the running, running yeah. thing, yeah, we did that, and it was like you're supposed to do a certain amount of push-ups and mm -hmm. um, sit-ups a day, and then also meditate every day. Yeah. Um, and then if you don't do any one of the, uh, them, if you miss one of them, yeah. we go in twenty bucks into a pot, and then uh, by the end of the month, the person with the least this or we just decided uh who to donate uh -huh. to and we raised like 200 plus bucks because <laughs> sometimes you're like oh my god it's the end of the day already and then yeah. if, especially if you're busy yeah and you don't even have the time to get through the workout mm -hmm. right and then you're like ah oh, god damn it Dang, that's <laughs> but crazy. then like the 20 bucks adds up yeah you're like oh my god uh, i'm already at 100 <laughs> like that when it's just five days right so yeah. uh, that was a fun little thing and this thing. is different from the go Pro one, right? yeah, yeah, because yeah, I was running. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the GoPro one was a straight run in when yeah. Kev like surprised us with his. Uh, hey, you almost caught up. Though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those were really when you, close. When you're man. like, what the fuck? You just ran ten miles. <laughs> yeah. You just ran thirty. When you see, I think the worst part is when you're in a run challenge and then you're you're chilling and then you get a notification <laughs> on the app yeah. that they've run and you're like, oh my god, and then you see uh -huh. where they've run. Oh yeah, like and like this dude ran the bridge and I think that's when I was like this motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> like taking it seriously what app is this? Uh, uh, we were just using the map my run. it's an under oh, armor okay. I, I, I like yeah. Strava better I'm yeah. kind of using that right now but huh. I mean it's what we had yeah. at the time yeah. Um, yeah I just remember I'd be at work just sitting down and I'd look at my phone I'm like god damn it I gotta <laughs> run like during my lunch or something <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> but it was good yeah it was fun to do that good um kind of uh, challenge yeah with each other uh it's the most i've ever run yeah in my life and then after that we didn't run <laughs> the rest of the year yeah. <laughs> took a chill yeah. oh, it man. took a while to recover yeah. like our souls from yeah. that how many people were in this in the challenge just four of us four, yeah. nice yeah. nice yeah. nice and then it was uh, because I think what was funny is that the first few runs were like three miles, three miles. And I was like, oh, this is doable. <laughs> three, four miles. And then one homie did like eight miles. Josh okay. did that. And then we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then that weekend was when everybody did like 10 miles, 10 miles, oh, 13. Dang. I was yeah. like, motherfuckers. <laughs> and yeah, that's when, that's when like... I think the whole month just focused on that. Like I, <laughs> I, I had to schedule my life around yeah. the times I would run, Damn. like that. And then it, it wasn't the smartest because yeah. none of us had like actual training or knowledge mm -hmm. of like proper running form, yeah. like how to actually ramp up properly, yeah. things like that. But it was just a good experience that we'll, we'll try to relaunch and we'll do something. Yeah, down to yeah. Down cool. To yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, Hundred like, mile club. Hundred mile, mile club. Yeah. Yeah. For the month, that'll be good. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about um, jiu jitsu? Jiu jitsu, yeah. I mean, so 
Oh I wait, 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 wait. Actually, yeah. sorry, Can, we didn't finish. Cause could you give me a little rundown what minimalism like mm-hmm. entails? Oh yeah, like how you actually live it out and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, it's I just forget. it's just pretty much decluttering. Like be a, like another form of it is essen- essentialism. Like just uh. do things that's essential to your well being. So like when I travel, I do not want to carry like a whole bunch of shit. Like I just only bring the stuff that's essential for my trip. I know some people they bring luggages but then they don't even wear half the stuff that uh-huh. they bring. Uh-huh. So I'm just cutting pretty much just cutting the fat. Um only focus on things that 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 are meaningful to me. Like when it comes to clothes, like I wear the same shit all the time. I want to be comfortable. I don't have to I don't want to think about what I'm going to wear. Um, like a typical stuff for me is like seriously wearing a gray t-shirt and my Lululemon pants to work. <laughs> like I don't, I don't care how I look. I mean, I'm already married. So just like, I don't want to waste any time of thinking things that really don't matter. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh. So that's how I adopt in my life. Also just the, 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 the look of it. I love the, I'm not sure if like the architect is that the right word like design a, like, design yeah, yeah, yeah. It's design. clean like, not clean. a lot of distractions yeah yeah um, yeah I know uh, I, I don't know what documentary it was but it was talking about like a lot of successful people like Mark Zuckerberg mm-hmm. um, Steve Jobs and the reason why they wear the same thing every day is so because they believe like every day you can only make so many choices yeah. yep. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just removing that, mm-hmm. like, it helps a lot. Like, for example, my girlfriend, like, she has so many clothes. And <laughs> every morning she's like, what should I wear? And I'm like, don't get me dragged in this. Like, I'm wearing the yeah, same shit I wore yesterday. Yeah. Like, you know, you exactly. figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, just seeing, like, how stressed out she is. Like, I'm like, gosh, I'm so You're glad. You're wasting like, brain cells. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, you wasted yeah. 30 minutes. I could have, like, go went running or something. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> cook the meal but yeah, yeah it's a lifestyle yeah so. actually so you brought up like a documentary about like uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs so I read this uh, biography book about Steve Jobs he went to Japan and that's how he found out about minimalism oh, because yeah. that kind of oh. originated in Japan yeah Shintoism I mean, yeah if you go to Japan like they sleep on the floor they it's very clean and all this stuff so when he went to japan and he came back to america that's when he had the idea about the iphone he looked at all these like blackberries the blackberries the phone for the kids who don't know <laughs> yeah so he looked at blackberry they looked at he looked at all these phones and he said that like how can i make this simple and elegant uh-huh. so he removed the the number pads so it's all one screen for the iphone so um you know yeah that was just a cool thing that you brought up yeah. that i just remembered you do have you do get some nice aesthetics when yeah, aesthetics, it's just clean yeah, yeah right? aesthetics like, is the word you have the uh, some videos of your room yeah and yeah. your room oh, the man. minimalism you should see his viral video right now <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, a viral that's video. how he's getting ad revenue yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of my videos it was I since I live with my with my parents my wife decided to we, we decided to like move into my parents house so what we did was we decided to renovate all of the downstairs for us to live in and I made a video about the whole renovation and how uh. to make it like minimalist and things like that so that video like it was crazy because I, I shot that video about six months ago didn't get any views and then all of a sudden and I think I texted you the morning yeah. up, one morning I woke up and it had like 40,000 views all in one night and like three no not 300 but like like 150 comments when I woke up and then now it's at like 160 K yeah, views. It's not slowing down either. Yeah. It's, it's like, just it just keep up. going. Yeah. 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 And it's just something that has been up for a while. Yeah. I video. mean, it's just like six months ago, but uh-huh. I think since the new year, I think everybody's going to try to adopt the more minimalist lifestyle mm. or like maybe renovate their condo, house. their house. Yeah. All yeah. Right? The Marie Kondo yeah. method, Kanmari yeah. method. Did you yeah. do that? I knew, you know, it's funny. I read her book before the show came out. Uh. Um, it's pretty much just like how to like tidy your like stuff up. Yeah. But like, I'm more of like removing things uh, that uh. I don't need. Uh, uh. But I mean, yeah, her, her book is good. I the did the like, whole process with my clothes. Yeah. And, then I, re- and uh, I only did the clothes and books so far. But then I realized, wow, I have a lot of shit that I don't even care for. Yeah. Even the books. Like, yeah. I'm like, How, why do I have this? Yeah. Even if I've, I haven't read it in a while or I don't even like it, 
and yeah. I'm I'm just keeping it, and then yeah. it kind of makes you realize like maybe I do have some hoarder shit. Yeah, <laughs> bro, have you ever been to like a typical Filipino house? Oh Man, my god, dude. bro, it's bad. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Like, but it looks just like every other Tito's yeah, house, yeah. right? You're like, oh, this looks familiar. Yeah, right. You, and, yeah, funny story because um. I, when I bought my Tesla, my friend kept asking me, oh, how do you charge it? And I kept saying, oh, um, I just charge it in the garage. And he was totally confused of what that meant. And he was like, what do you mean you charge it in the garage? I'm like, y- I have a charger in the garage. I put the car in the garage. And then I realized a lot of Filipinos don't put cars in, in the, the garage, garage because yeah. they, they just stuff everything in their yeah. garage. I was surprised the first time I went to your house. I was like, whoa, he's got all this space. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, we have two cars in the garage. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I, dude, I... I minimal slash shit up uh, so much, uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah. Because my parents they, they they hoard too, so yeah, yeah. yeah do but do you like tell your parents like, hey, yeah. this is too much and all that? Yeah, I, I uh, tell them. I tell them all the yeah. time. Yeah, I tell yeah. them all. The time. I do the same with my mom. Like she has hella hangers, and I'm like, mom, we only need like ten. Like you don't need all this, and she's like, oh, you know, I might need one of these. Oh, days. dude, my mom yeah, still like, does that. Yeah, yeah, might need it. Might need it as a number yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was thinking because I was talking to my friend about this. Like his dad kind of like buys like uh, stuff. Yeah, buys, 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 and then uh, on some conversation, like it kind of made sense uh, when they talk about. Uh, that being kind of almost a form of success, right? Of being able to immigrate and like being able to buy these things uh-huh. in comparison to what's there in the Philippines. Yeah. And then it's a lot of this idea of saving it for a bad day, mm-hmm. right? Saving things for a bad day and wh- where, where I think it's tied to that kind of immigrant um, experience. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, I'm try. I try to be patient yeah. with them, with the folks who kind of have that, because it's kind of this attachment to to items for security, and thinking that oh, like, or at the same time also as a status of success, mm-hmm. of like, okay, we've made it because we can afford these things yeah. and buy these things. Yeah. But then I've had to have the conversation with my mom when she comes home from Bed Bath and Beyond. Sometimes, <laughs> I'm like, my God, this shit is expensive too. Yeah. Like for stuff you could get on Amazon. <laughs> for half the price but it's from Bed Bath & Beyond because yeah. there's a coupon yeah. right up to uh, yeah. 20% yeah. fish dish is like 50% more expensive yeah man right but, but I think that's what the, we're, we're at the age where we can have those conversations now mm-hmm. we're at the age where we have to have those conversations right have yeah. patience while doing it yeah. um, but and like understand why or they might have yeah. these behaviors yeah. but like you know pushing back like yeah. of like expenditures and like hoarding stuff yeah. you, you mentioned your your uh, your uncle or your dad's your, your friend's dad yeah. about being attached to like these certain items yeah. uh, a really cool quote that's actually from the Avengers was uh, Wong was saying attachment to the material is detachment from the spiritual and uh, that kind of ties that, that ties along uh, with like mindfulness and spirituality uh, that ties into <laughs> dating advice that I need <laughs> holy shit yeah. attachment to nice. the physical or oh, no, material material yeah. oh okay yeah, I was hearing what I had to hear <laughs> <laughs> Whatever helps. Bro. Yeah, whatever whatever helps. I mean, it's the same material, same yeah, thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Material, physical, right? Yeah, it's same detachment. Th- yeah, same thing. Think about it. Yeah. Drop the mic on that. Yep. Is uh, detachment uh, to uh, the spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Like attachment to all these things that uh-huh. like you need, like status. Yeah. Oh, you see that a lot in the Philippines. Oh. Like like just status symbols oh, yeah. with like cars yep. especially clothing yeah. how you're dressed yeah. is super big in the Philippines like I, I'm way more aware of it when I'm in the Philippines mm-hmm. just cause there's like this collective psyche kind yeah. of I feel there's a collective psyche when you visit places yep. and like what most of the people are thinking or communicating and interacting and there in the Philippines especially in Manila in the cities I feel a lot more um, 
awareness and attention is paid to status symbols such as cars mm -hmm. or like if you have a car if you're like which one you're driving um if it's an expensive import and also what clothes you wear right if you're looking cleaner and maybe that means you're wealthier mm -hmm. right and it's a trip that like here i don't really care about some stuff then once i'm there in the philippines and you kind of get the momentum uh, of everybody else i'm like oh what car does they drive like that <laughs> is like oh and then you're kind of like yeah. seeing Seeing things through the lens mm -hmm. of people and it's kind of sucky yeah. that I get caught up in that too. But yeah. then um, it's that's why it's super cool to travel mm -hmm. and like see different kind of ways of being, ways of living mm -hmm. from one place to another. Oh, like that, sure. right? And then I, I know I saw that hello when I went to Vietnam mm -hmm. for the first time and I was like, oh, people are living a different way and it's still mm -hmm. dope. Yeah. Right, like buildings, buildings where it goes more vertical and like it's that French style. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my god, this is cool, <laughs> but it's totally different from what we're mm -hmm. ac we've accepted as norms, mm -hmm. right? So that's cool. That's why yeah. I like uh, traveling and all that. Oh, and yeah, you, you, yeah, you went to like Japan for your yeah for a honeymoon, honeymoon. I went to Japan and Hawaii. Yeah, oh. yeah. but no, I, I love traveling. Yeah. I I did like this whole backpacking trip in Asia when oh, you I was still single. Yeah, yeah. Oh, went, where'd you go? I went to Philippines. I went to Vietnam. I went to South Korea. Just a whole bunch of other places. Oh, for how long? Three weeks. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Let's go yeah. back. Yeah, I'm, well, <laughs> shoot, I'm married now. So I'm I know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought uh, it was yeah, yeah. Wait, so every time my, my my wife's doing something like she's about to go to a bachelorette party, I always text Reba like, "Hey, Reba, hey, I'm free this day. Where, where are you trying <laughs> yeah, to go? Where like, are you trying to shoot? Yo, this week, like, make sure you're available, bro. <laughs> <laughs> married life. Yeah, man, but I love it. I love it. Yeah. Are you gonna have kids soon? Uh, we're like. I mean, it's all in like God's time, but yeah, we'd love to to have kids. Ah, yeah. 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 teach them investing. Hell ASAP. yeah! Yeah. Hell yeah. So, ASAP. yeah! so Reaper, he actually sent me an article about this kid who started yeah. investing at eleven. So I was telling him, yeah, dude, I'm gonna start teaching my kid when he comes out the womb, so he could <laughs> retire when he's like eighteen. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. In reality, yeah. probably yeah. shit. Yeah. Well, if you're that able to start that early. Hell yeah! I mean, right? dude, this life is all about like living, man. So I wanna if. I do have a kid make sure that of course like his his mind is right but um like reber knows how i feel about education like i was able to get a uh, a good job without without education mm. not to say that education isn't important but like dude it's super expensive yep. and sometimes yep. people who come out of it don't really no, still don't know what to do or um, they're still having a hard time finding a job. So I'd love to teach them like about like mindfulness and like mm. finance and things like that. Mm. You know? Like things that have helped you yeah. be successful and that's not just industry specific. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Do you still do jujitsu? I do. I Well, so I don't have a membership just because I was going, uh, I when I was working at the startup, I was in SF. And then the gym that I was at was in Mountain View. So the, it was hard for me to commute to Mountain View to go to that gym. But as of right now, I do just mostly like open mats. Mm. Like, uh, How did you find the gym in Mountain View? It was right next to my work. Oh, so yeah. you started when you were at LinkedIn? When I was at LinkedIn, yeah. Uh. yeah, yeah. So I was, there. I was there for about three years. Um, got my blue belt after two years. A little less than two years and then um, left before anything else. The black belt curse. I mean, the blue the, belt curse. Oh, the blue belt uh, <laughs> blues. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I got it super bad. Like, I, I did a podcast and yeah. a video about it. Yeah. Um, there was a, like, dude. That I, dude was cool. Who was that dude? I uh, listened Denny. to that episode. Denny, Denny. he's yeah. dope. He, he actually, sounds dope. Shout out to him because he has a gym called BAME Jiu Jitsu. It's located in Fremont. Uh, BAME? Reaver, BAME. B A E M. Which B -A -E -M. stands. B A E M. Mm, yeah, BAME. B A E M. E M, uh, which stands for I think snake in uh, Korean. He's Korean. Oh. Yeah, but he's a really cool black belt. He's uh, he's like a millennial, but um, yeah, super dope. He's real, you know. Uh, uh. But uh, and his techniques are super sick. Dude, they just yeah. opened a uh, tenth planet daily city. Yeah, I so that when I say open mat, the yeah. open mats I go to, it's those. Oh, open Saturdays. Mats. Yeah, Saturdays. Saturdays. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah dude, I invited yeah. Reaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was planning on going this Saturday. Go. Oh, let's yeah, go. Yeah. I've been there. I've been to yeah, the yeah, open yeah. mat before. Yeah, it's cool. Hella friendly yeah, dudes. Yeah, 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 yeah. hella dope. Oh, let's go this yeah, Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I might be down. Don't, yeah, don't, don't. Oh, wait, are, are you going to Yosemite? I'm going tomorrow. Oh. Wait, today's oh yeah. Today's okay. Thursday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unemployed yeah. right now. So I need to track a time. Dude, but dude, I so the gym that I go to, we rarely did leg locks. Mm. And I was getting caught in leg locks so many times. Man. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah leg yeah, lock. Yeah. Well, for especially Tenth Planet. Yeah. Yeah, they're all yeah. about that leg lock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Daily City has a lot of leg leg lockers. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Saturday so how, is how long have you been doing jujitsu? Uh on off uh but started like uh like oh nine. Oh yeah, nine yeah Whoa. but I only got consistent and with like a gym that got, like is competitive here. Like to maybe in 2013, 2014 okay. was when I found FTCC, and that's when I got into like doing it more regularly. Mm -hmm. Was able to get my blue, and then a few years purple, and then. Nice. But also, once I I have I, I got like into a hiatus. Maybe the yeah. last two years I was out because of school in the East Bay, yeah. so I wouldn't be able to be out here that yeah. consistently, right? But it is cool now that I've been doing it a while to like look at old pictures and then see who's still rolling oh, at the yeah. gym yeah. or where they're at now like, oh yeah. oh i remember yeah. this guy like yeah. that and then you kind of have stories of yeah. people throughout the years yeah. where i'm like oh that guy that you'll probably yeah. know some of the dudes because they yeah. came from skyline wrestling yeah. too yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had like anwar did you ever meet anwar, anwar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he works at uh, costco <laughs> yeah. yeah anwar came through uh um hyro 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 wrestler yeah he's opened up a few dudes because of his yeah. very like like very aggressive he opened up uh, uh dude needed stitches once oh, just yeah. by accident yeah. you know actually yeah. so because uh sometimes my cousin's a senior at el camino high school so oh, yeah? sometimes i pop in and uh uh just roll with them and Hiro showed up oh yeah yeah so he still he still wrestles too yeah yeah, 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 yeah he's yeah. strong he has a kid now oh yeah uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that's why he got that's all it's either the the blue belt blues or you have a kid yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah man. what happens too man and did you start in socal yes okay, okay. i started in no no actually oh i actually started in mountain view at the half gracie there that was the very first spot that uh, i joined back in 09 when i was in uh, high school bj penn went to that school a while back right? no i think he was in la he was at the Huff Gracie one, or was he at the yeah, I think Mountain he was View? Mountain View, yeah, oh, yeah. Because okay. I saw a video of him in Mountain View, and oh. he was like, "Oh yeah, this is where I he started. started." Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, he started in Hilo, but then he went to Mountain View just to get better training. Mm, yeah, that was yeah. during my time of like, I'm gonna be just like BJ Penn. Yeah. <laughs> and my black belt in yeah. a few yeah. years. Prodigy. <laughs> yeah. Do you compete? Yes, actually, uh, this 22nd, I was going to tell y'all, there's a competition in Sacramento that's uh, uh, EBI rules submission oh, right. only. Yeah, sure. um, and they, I think, all uh, attacks uh, and then uh, double elimination. So it's not just oh, a nice. one and out. Nice. So I've been going to those more so. Nice. Uh, there's a good one if you want in March. Shout out to um, Jiu Jitsu World League. Oh, I love those tournaments. Yo. They, yeah, they, they run it so well. And you get to weigh in. In, in the morning dude. yes because most most tournaments you have you wait in right before your match i'm like dude i don't want to like be cutting <laughs> yeah. for the match water right? weight and, and all yeah. that yeah they text you the time your match starts yeah, yeah. who the night before who organizes that yeah, yeah. i think i'm just so enamored with them because i've been to really bad oh, yeah. really run like competitions and i didn't know it was bad until i've had it this good yeah. it's like a relationship right yeah. like you know you're like <laughs> wow i'm gonna a relationship with someone who treats me well he didn't realize you were as shitty was before yeah. and then so I've had like competitions where you're waiting there oh, for yeah. hours five six hours right when yeah. the posted time is like 1pm your matches until we're really like 6-7 Jiu Jitsu World League they texted the night before 7pm it starts and then right at 7pm our little bracket started yeah. and then they record all the uh, matches on their they, website, uh, yeah. and they put it on their website 
website so you can search up your name and yeah. find all the matches there yeah. um, and all the records are kept and everything hella well run that's why yeah. I'm I like yeah, yeah I am a big supporter of them and shit if I could get like a, an affiliate code yeah. <laughs> well like, so you know what's funny I actually um, I brought my my camera there and my cousin was filming me uh, on my match and the owner of Jiu Jitsu World League he was like he was talking to my cousin he was saying like hey next time you come here I'll let you in for free just record the matches and let us post it on the oh uh, yeah. on their IG so, yeah, yeah maybe yeah, you yeah. can like talk to the owner yeah. he's super cool yeah they've been doing dope like even IG stuff mm-hmm. um, but yeah they're also double elimination so or they strive to get like you multiple matches so it's not just a one and out because yeah. I've done a bunch oh, of those yeah. too I'm like I drove one time I drove all the way to Santa Cruz dude I okay <laughs> was yeah. it the, the uh, open open yeah oh, US, oh, open. US Open yeah dude I same here like I drove all the way to Santa Cruz and I was a white belt at the time <laughs> and then my match didn't start to like six and then I lost my first match too. Uh, <laughs> and then yeah. I was like, all right, I guess I'm driving back. And then I had, to, oh, that was also a morning I had to like run in Santa yeah. Cruz because I was a little overweight. Yeah. I was so tired and everything. As I was like, because yeah. oh, you weigh in right before your match too. Yeah, dude, there. I really hated it. <laughs> and then I was like just sitting there after like, oh, fuck. Can I eat somewhere <laughs> cool? Is there, can I do something cool to merit the drive yeah, all the way man. to Santa Cruz? cruise uh but yeah those are uh those are the upcoming um events and i do try to compete and because i feel it's different it's different like role like going through the process of competition yeah um for sure and uh, like i think i've been a very like gym like you those dudes who perform well in the gym but then have choked in like the competition just because you're not if you don't do it as often you kind of um overthink things a lot and the nerves get to you and kind of everything goes out the window and i go into my rampage mode (laughs) and then i'm like oh what the fuck (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've like woken up I was choked out with like a uh, clock choke oh, one shoot. and then I'm like I wake up in the middle of the mat I'm like oh what what happened <laughs> oh, <dude>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was this when you were purple or blue I think I was a blue for that one mm. yeah when I was um, yeah I don't know I forget actually could have been one of them b- mm. blue or purple but it was yeah. during a Naga nice. yeah one of the Naga events um, and yeah I think that was the the only time but I oh no I was also choked out I think in <laughs> another one oh, you get flashbacks <laughs> yeah. right when you're like thinking about these yeah, things yeah white belt when I was white belt uh, City College had uh, a jiu jitsu competition and then I think I got choked out by a, uh, uh, an Ezekiel too oh, it's like I one of those Ezekiel. things where it's like oh I can get out of this and then, and then you're like yeah out. and then you wake up yeah. and I'm like oh I, I guess I didn't get out of it <laughs> 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 and then it comes on quick especially if it's those blood chokes yeah right because sometimes you get used to like just breathing a little yeah. bit like finding a little space to like breathe if yeah. it's another choke yeah. if it's just like here uh windpipe and then you're able to breathe and i guess if you do that for the blood you're like you're finding yeah. spot then you're out yeah already like that um but yeah i think when we're talking about tools of uh dealing with things mm-hmm. right jujitsu came Jeez. to my mind yeah that's yeah. my thing of being able to get in and then kind of get those energies out yeah um instead of because i overthink things a lot mm-hmm. i'm very cerebral and so when i'm able to do things like jujitsu i'm very in the moment there and yeah. i'm very present rather than thinking of everything else yeah going yeah. on no i think that was one of the main reasons why i joined jiu- jujitsu as mm-hmm. well it was like i want to get i want to stay active get healthy but also be in the present moment and dude you're like at a competition you're not going to be anywhere near as present moment as that yeah, right like yeah. you can't think about anything else yeah, like yeah. if you think about something else you're about to get choked dude yeah like yeah. you have to be there in that present moment yeah. you know what i uh jiu-jitsu is getting more mainstream now which yeah. is cool um but uh, i don't like this thing where i've met some dudes who like have done jiu-jitsu then they stop uh but then they're like talking to me very very like authoritative about 
jujitsu. Uh-huh. Like in a way, I don't know if I'm like like like. Uh, there's a word for it. Um, uh, or casuals. There you go. Who are very like. Uh, there. Uh, I don't want to. I'm, I'm kind of skirting. I don't want to like say <laughs> names right now, right? But there's this dude who be like kind of talking, talking a little like, oh, I got this other guy's number, like uh, that, like kind of stunting when we're talking. Yeah. But I was like, I know that this dude has not rolled in so long, <laughs> yeah. and like I just don't like that. Yeah. It's like though. It's like the same um, principle of a guy who talks so much shit about uh, what's this called a uh, football uh, professional. Yeah. Football when they peaked in high school football, uh, you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, but they're like forty two now. But they're yeah. like, you know, back in my day, <laughs> <laughs> like. And so I've been noticing that uh, yeah. with some folks who are who are like. Um, Talk about the glory days of yeah. there. Back when I was, you know, uh, yeah, white Reaver, belt. Stop talking about your glory days. Man. <laughs> he doesn't do it. It's not <laughs> Reaver. <laughs> I, was I wasn't kidding. skirting around because no, he's right. here. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> but I think uh, overall, though, it's a good community. Yeah. Jiu Jitsu is a dope community. And it's like whenever I do meet someone, oh, you do Jiu Jitsu? Oh, yeah. Me too. Da, 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 da. And then you yeah. keep on like talking about shit. Right. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's, it's crazy because like I, I haven't been in a class in a while but i still do open mats but dude i still watch like all the youtube video yeah, 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 i watch yeah, 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 yeah. uh gordon ryan yeah, and, yeah, yeah. uh nikki ryan and yeah watch all the dude and then there's this other dude who's been popping up on my feet a lot and i love watching him roll he's like big guy he's one of danaher's boys oh too. nick rodriguez yes dude oh, that dude, dude is freaking dude, sick yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, well, no he's, he's a purple, purple now, now. Purple now. but yeah, dude yeah. that dude is so freaking sick man and yeah. when he faced cyborg yeah yeah dude oh my and th- okay <laughs> i was just gonna bring this up because it tripped me out. Uh, Gordon Ryan was writing um, on a post about uh, Nick, right? I think it was just some IG comment. But basically, he was saying, like, Nick is still a blue belt, yeah. or like, in terms of knowledge of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And even another guy, because he was talking about a guy that Nick faced in uh, Kasai. Kasai? Is that mm-hmm. the most recent it one? It wasn't Luke Rockhold, right? It wasn't, no, okay. but, um, some other, in this recent jiu to match mm-hmm. um, and who is a black belt and Gordon Ryan was saying ah he's really a blue belt like that in no, term- to the black belt to the black belt okay, okay. like kind of you know talking shit yeah. but giving his opinion that his jujitsu at least based on their rubric yeah. is, or his rubric yeah. is not a black belt it's like yeah. a blue belt right yeah. and then I was thinking shit maybe I, I'm just a blue belt bro <laughs> like when I'm th- like <laughs> thinking <laughs> like like the because there's a wide range of skills now yeah especially when you get into like competitive jiu-jitsu oh yeah some motherfuckers know so much bro yeah. like that that's why i kind of don't like going to op- visiting gyms gi because uh. i don't want to wear my purple belt <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then have to be like a representative dude it's it's crazy yeah. and it's also like a mind fuck cuz so when i was going to um 10th planet right i was going against this uh at the time since you don't wear the 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 belt i was going against this purple belt and for whatever reason i felt like i was handling myself pretty well and then once i found out that he was a purple belt and we rolled again he was like just kicking my ass so uh, like i don't know if it's like it's a, a man yeah so i don't, uh. dude i don't know that's why i the gym that i got my blue belt at it was a place where we did mostly gi so that's why I'm trying to go to 10th Plan a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. like the no gi. Come aspect. to FTCC. Yeah. Sunday open mats. Okay. We have Sunday open mats. I've been trying to get more of the 10th Plan of folks to go uh-huh. to the FTCC one. And I've been telling FTCC folks to, to go to the nice. uh, Saturday one. So yeah. it's like a Saturday open mat, Sunday open mat. Ooh. Then you can rest yeah. a little bit, do some classes <laughs> yeah. during the is week. There, is the parking you know? get better? Do the parking get better for FTCC? Uh, on Sundays, they're fine. Mm. It's fine because oh. there's no, you can street park anywhere like that okay. and then don't uh, tell Walgreens by sometimes parking yeah, the Walgreens yeah I remember <laughs> for, the, for the open mat for an hour is okay-ish okay uh, but uh, for a night time oh, I yeah. wouldn't do it uh, yeah, yeah. Doing you that. know I'm also curious since you're in FTCC there was a there's a new gym that opened in Millbrae that's like right next well, I don't know where it's at, but it's... Uh, fight my, culture. Fight culture. Okay, because my wife's parents live there, live near, uh, lives in Millbrae, so I always uh, want to check it out. Yeah, yeah, Have yeah. Have you been 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. fight culture. Okay. That it, was where's lo- it located at? Because it didn't say it didn't show. It's on like Instagram. in this kind of industrial area, okay. like right by the freeway. I forget um, specific street or whatever, but it's kind of like in these rows of like industrial office looking stuff. Okay, um, and then they have their gym inside. Okay, uh, actually, really good parking <laughs> there. But yeah, so yeah. that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> really like good parking no there. So yeah, it was launched by uh, Richie and Kyle okay. Black Bell. Uh, from FTCC, FTCC. Okay. Um, and then yeah they just launched it recently and they're going consistent they have a bunch of excuse me uh, classes already Muay okay. Thai things like that nice, yeah. nice I don't know if they have an open mat okay. that's, a, that's the only thing yeah I might want to just check out classes because I want to get like a membership hopefully oh nearby yeah, more, nearby. more nearby your work yeah, yeah, yeah. they're do- oh, they're not near work just near home Oh, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're near Millbrae. Yes, also. now I'm near Millbrae. Oh. Well, I still live in Daly City, but like I'm always at my wife's parents' house. Uh. Yeah, just for like catching up and dinner. Did, but did y'all y'all officially moved into your house? Yeah, here? in Daly City. In the Daly City. Yeah, uh. yeah. I can't How, leave Daly City, man. Yeah. <laughs> How's it been transitioning to living with a wife? It's good, dude. I mean, like, she, she slept over a lot of times anyway. So, so it's, it's kind of like it. Yeah, it's kind of the same. But now she's officially, like, there. It's good. I like it. Yeah, we were talking to about our friend who just recently got married. Yeah. But they've been together for, like, 12 years. And we're like, dude, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they just... live together, basically, too. Yeah, like. they live <laughs> together. Everything. Uh, so I think, I think the only thing that changes is, like, Jewelry. Jewelry. Yeah, no. I, don't mean, I don't even wear my ring. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm a minimalist. I don't like to like have anything <laughs> yeah. on, dude. Yeah. You know, I get get that tattooed. It. Yeah, I might get tattooed. Oh, you get, get tattooed. tattooed. Yeah, yeah. Oh. But I'm, it'll be my first tattoo. I just haven't picked out the design and just oh. have time to go. Does she wear her ring? Does yeah, she like she it? Oh. Yeah, dude, she better, man. I paid a lot of money for it. <laughs> <laughs> do you do that whole three month? It was it supposed to be. Like three months of your of your salary, three months salary. No, I didn't do that. Oh. No, I just whatever she liked. Yeah, uh, yeah. Pay yeah. off her school and all. Yeah. 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 Well. Oh, yeah. you help pay off the school. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, because dude, I'm a person that doesn't like to have debt. Yep, yep. So whatever, like, I don't. I try to minimize like my monthly expenses. So if we have to take out a loan or if we have to pay monthly for that, it was just something that I you was like. interested in. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, I helped pay it off, but. Good. And the interest, yeah, the interest is gonna kill. Yeah, so like a lot of people don't realize, like, say if you, like, say if you had a loan of a hundred thousand dollars and the interest was like five percent, you're essentially paying more than what the initial loan is. Like, so why would you pay more for what yeah. you're wanting to borrow? It just mm. doesn't doesn't make sense. So mm-hmm. that's why you just pay it off. I wonder. Even if we have financial education, right? Uh-huh. This is on some conspiracy shit. Is, th- th- is there always going to be a certain subset, right, of people who, even if th- it's there, will not learn? Because, of course, the companies need to profit. Yeah. And there's going to be a certain amount of people who will still buy into their business model. Oh, yeah. Right? Sure. Of paying the minimum a month. Yeah. Right? Of paying, oh, my God, bro. When I think of credit cards, oh, credit man. card debt, and how people be really be paying yeah. just the minimum. Yeah. Like, that, dude, that does not make sense to me. Like, my, like, I hate to put my wife on blast, but she was doing that before <laughs> she <laughs> met me. I'm like, why would you pay a minimum on your credit card? And like it's what's funny is that she has the money to pay, to it, pay off, it off, yes. but she does minimum. Like it's just it's crazy. And that shit is like twenty percent. Yeah, like that shit is mania of like how yeah. much that just gets added. Yeah, every month. Imagine and like buying a shoe for a hundred dollars. You think you're just buying it for a hundred dollars, but then in re- reality, you're paying a hundred twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Like but even more because you're yeah. not, you're over paying minimum months. over oh, three, yeah. three months. Yeah, dude, it's oh, kind of a trip. Yeah. and then when you could just. Pay it off, yeah. Right, the money is paying off there. Like, exactly. I don't know. It's like, it's weird. And yeah, I and it's almost predatory on some level that mm-hmm. the banks, right, uh, oh. sir, target certain demographics to take mm-hmm. out more loans. Right? Yeah, and that's that's their business model. Mm-hmm. But I think it's good that we have folks who are trying to educate themselves, yeah. their families, and others, right? <coughs> because 
it sucks when yeah. you see like at least for me when I see my homies even struggling yeah uh, and their families specifically I'm like oh my god tita what the fuck yeah. like, what the, like like no yeah. no no tita don't buy yeah. that yeah. right or like especially on the home loans things like that I think that's yeah. what I've been noticing more yeah right? yeah I think we just need like someone or like if they could have someone in the family to like teach them all like financial literacy I think that's what's super important and that's uh. what I'm trying to teach like my younger cousins like my cousin who, who's a wrestler El Camino he's 17 but right when he's 18 I'm going to teach him everything about investing mm, um, mm. he doesn't have any credit cards so when he does open a credit card I'm going to teach him everything I know mm, mm, yeah. mm. do you what well, uh, Tell me a little bit about your minimal investing, like yeah. when, uh, your approach to stocks and investing, yeah. things like yeah, that. Yeah, oh, Break it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's up? <laughs> Talk about some Tesla stocks. Oh, right Tesla now. stocks. <laughs> no, no, no. Tesla stocks. Yeah, yeah. Like tripled recently. Yeah. Well, right? no, it just crashed it today. It just crashed today? Yeah. It crashed today. Oh, yeah, 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 to so what? What is it? It's oh, uh, right. When it opened, it was like 680 when oh. it opened. God dang. Yeah, yeah, and it was at 900, like 900. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the way that approach finance or uh investing is like i try to do like a minimalist approach of what it's called uh dollar cost averaging mm. and basically what that is is every month regardless of what the price of the stock is you just purchase so the way that i set it up i currently use robin hood and with robin hood i deposit about 300 dollars every single month and with the 300 dollars I purchase like my my favorite stocks and I buy the stocks regardless of what price it is. Even if it's high, if it's low, it doesn't matter because year over year, it's going to average out. But hopefully with an uptrend. So, are you choosing individual stocks? Or are you doing ETFs? Or so I do, I do, I do all all sorts of because I think the best way to to invest is to be diversified. So um, I do ETF, mutual fund stocks, but for individual stocks, I choose like a set amount of stocks and these stocks are just companies that I really enjoy using or stocks that I really believe in. Like in my Robinhood account, I only have, I only choose three different stocks, which is uh, currently have Disney, Roku and Facebook. Roku. Yeah. Yeah. I love Roku, dude. I love Roku. And like every, if you go to my house, every room has a Roku box. Really? Yeah. What what's so nice about the Roku? It's it's the I I feel like it's the best it has the best interface for connecting to like the um to streaming platforms. So Really? Yeah, like oh. Netflix, it Hulu, all these things. It has the best visual UI compared to anything else, compared to LG, Samsung, Apple TV. I feel like it's the best. Oh, so you're really using it just as a hub to connect to the other exactly. streaming things. Yeah. But I also have a TV that's, uh, the software is, is Roku. My, my guess is that a big company, a big TV company is going to purchase Roku. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, for example, I started investing into Roku in 2016. At that time, the stock was about, Twenty-two dollars right now. It's hovering around like one thirty. Damn. Yeah. Times yeah. five. Yeah, wow. but you know, through through throughout that time, like those four years, I've seen it dip really low. I've seen it go really really high. But regardless, I purchase the stock every single month, mm. regardless of the price. Mm. What was your experience and current stance on cryptocurrency? Oh yeah. So I think uh, <laughs> Kevin's like laughing. Right. Tell but, us the story. Um, so I got into cryptocurrency like right before the boom happened. So uh, of twenty of twenty, uh, I, I think seventeen. Yeah, right? yeah. So boom. I I purchased Bitcoin twenty sixteen, late twenty fifteen, and uh, like whoever, if someone like says that they're like an investment guru, they're like full of shit. Like I got like really lucky, even with stocks. I just got really lucky because my dad taught me everything mm, mm. so when someone says like oh like you should invest in this you should invest in that because of x y and z like don't like don't believe them there it, all of this is i want to say gambling but with a trajectory of going upwards but with cryptocurrency i have a kevin and i we have a mutual friend uh joe buttram he was really into the cryptocurrency space and in late 2015 he told me to invest into bitcoin um at the time i didn't really know what bitcoin was but i looked at the technology and i felt like since i was an engineer i feel like it really has a lot of potential 
And I put about maybe like $1,000 or $5,000 in. And the following year, I like quadrupled my money. And uh, through that, I was able to invest in other things. Um, I'm still in the cryptocurrency space. But um, yeah, like I wouldn't say like, oh, crypto, crypt, crypto is the future or anything because I just, at that point, I was just really, really lucky. Mm, yeah. Mm. So in terms of a perspective on the actual usage of it, mm -hmm. you don't think Bitcoin is a future? No, I'm, I'm not saying that. I think... Bitcoin has potential, but for me to say Bitcoin price is going to go up, like buy now, that's not something I'm going to say. Mm, mm. I, I feel like the technology is there, the it has potential, but it's like it's it's up to you if you really want to invest in. Same with stocks, like I'm not going to tell you invest in XYZ stocks. What I'm going to tell you is start investing now, regardless mm, mm. of what stock I tell you to to pick mm. uh, and the good part is that you knew how to pull out your earnings uh, kind of so when you were uh, on the peak of the cryptocurrency yeah, well so I see another thing I got really lucky there too mm. because the only reason why I pulled out was to purchase a house in in Vegas mm. so the rule of thumb with investing is if you sell you better put it to another investment. You better not use that to purchase a liability, like buying a new car or buying toys or buying, like, say, a new camera. Unless, again, cameras could be an investment yeah. if, if it makes you money. But <clears throat> the reason why I, I sold a, some of the cryptocurrency was to purchase the house in Vegas. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so you bought that in 2017, 2018? Uh, no, I bought that 2016. Oh. 2016. So got into crypto 2015, sold a little bit in 2016 to purchase the house. 2017 was the like the major boom. Took a little bit out, but not not so much. And I still have money in cryptocurrency mm. right now. Damn, that's good. That's better yeah. than my ass fucking <laughs> making like times 10 uh -huh. on some fucking ICX and being like, it's going to go higher. <laughs> it goes and down. then just <laughs> holding on to that. I don't know, maybe on just one thing, like three Gs. Damn. And then uh, I was like, I'm going to fucking pay off the house with this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's yeah. it. I think once, so like I have this theory or it's not really theory. I read it in a fucking book. But like if, when you start getting those ideas of like, oh, I'm going to get rich yeah. or I'm going to pay something else, that's, the time to you pull, pull out, out. Yep. you gotta pull out yep. yeah yep. yeah yep. yeah because yeah so, so like with the whole tesla thing right mm -hmm. people yesterday when the price was 900 they're like oh shit it's about to go up to a thousand i'm about to be rich off of this tesla stock but look what happened yep. today yeah. it fucking yep. dropped i was listening to uh the robin hood snack podcast actually oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then they were talking right about this uh tesla uh thing and mm -hmm. how uh, also the analysis is it was a short squeeze mm -hmm. where it was only going even higher than the initial jump because those who shorted it are cost averaging down mm -hmm. their uh their losses by purchasing more oh. right now right and and that's that second jump jump was because of all those uh, short sellers who are um, minimizing their loss, yep. right? And then, and it made me think, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But that's also something that you're, people who are casuals are not taught, right? Mm -hmm. To analyze things in, in that way, to know the whole market, the, how things are being played. So there again, we have another example of uh, a lack of knowledge mm -hmm. contributing to loss, yeah. right? Yeah. And this, this is like kind of a game uh, of, of numbers, but no, you're in a better position once you know more of the rules yeah. and anal analysis of the game. Yeah, for right? sure. And I think like, like the worst thing to do is be greedy in this yeah. game, right? Yes. So that's why what I like to do, the dollar uh, cost averaging, just like regardless of price, just, you know, put money into the stock and sell it when you really need it. Like mm. I'm not looking to make a quick profit. Like I'm not going to purchase Tesla right now to make a quick profit that I could sell next week or whatever. If I were to purchase Tesla right now, it's for the long run. 
Yeah. Uh, uh. Is that your main? Uh, so the avenues that you said you've say you've shared the like house rental properties mm-hmm. things like that, and then stocks. Yep. Is that your main? Like, yeah. When so you look at investing and things like that. Uh, oh, yeah. For investing, I mean, I I do. Yeah, stocks is one. Cryptocurrency is one. My uh, real estate is one. I also have uh, ETFs. Mm. Is one. I also invest in gold. Gold, silver, um, because when the dollar depreciates, gold and silver tends to appreciate. Mm-hmm. So uh, for safekeeping, I also purchase gold and silver. Yeah. Do you have mentors that you? No, I mean um, my my dad. When it comes to investing, if I if I'm if I'm gonna like purchase investment, he's the person I talk to. Mm. Um, but I read a lot of books. Um, the I Will Teach You to Be Rich is one of my favorite books. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is one of my favorite books. And podcast. I love listening to podcasts. Oh, he has a podcast? Um, no, no. So Ramit uh, Sethi, who's the... Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's the, the I Will author. Teach You to Be yeah, Rich. He, is that he, yellow book, right? Yes, the yellow, yellow book. book. He's yeah. in multiple podcasts. Mm. I don't have a favorite like financial podcast, but he's featured in a multiple podcasts. What are some of them? Shout out. What do you listen to? Uh, Mad Money is Mad one, Money. one podcast. Um uh, Dave Ramsey is another podcast I listen to. Those are like the two main ones. But like every day, I'm always listening to Joe Rogan. He's yeah. my favorite podcaster of all time. Yep. Yeah. I think they're the same. I think that's <laughs> yeah. the OG. That's yeah. like the king right now. Yeah. I wonder how much money he makes. I've, oh, dude, I've I heard. Think it's th- 30 mil a year. It actually, oh, really? I just, yeah, I just there was a something. release. Yeah. Oh, um, because he was talking, I think, one time where like one uh, advertising uh, spot on his show, like on an episode. This is even way back. I don't know if it's it's probably higher now. It was like 50 G's for like one one little audio spot. Right? That's crazy. Are you pulling that here? Uh, A little less. We got all this little, gear, man. Yeah, Look at all the gear. The gear is sick. The, the gear. Freaking, this area is sick. This is more recently has been a passion project financed by myself. So, but we're uh, the goal is to extend it and to make a little bit more income on this. Okay. I'm actually visit going to a podcast conference. I think I sent it to you. I um, think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a podcasting conference happening in LA next week. Mm. So there, I'm gonna hopefully meet more of the industry, see what's going on. Nice. Uh, learn uh, more of the monetization, yeah. ad placement, things like that. I think the hard part for me is that a lot of this is just on me right now. Yeah. Right. So I'm uh, doing all the editing, the interviewing, the uh, scheduling, mm-hmm. the cuts, marketing. You have to yeah. do everything yourself, yeah, right? Networking. Yeah. Like the it's arts. the networking, yeah. and even the marketing is a whole nother le- like. I a field like I need someone to do it yeah. like uh, and because you have to do all the write ups the cuts the yeah. video cuts the even if you do an Instagram ad whatever yeah. and it's all and it it's all like a learning process for me uh, it's a cool process but it's also not the most financially stable mm-hmm. thing right now so that's why I am on a job hunt too but ideally mm-hmm. find ways to monetize this yeah. a little bit more so that it's not um um, it's sustainable yeah. right and I'm always on that philosophical back and forth on things like this where of course I did this without uh, when I first started I was not planning on making many money or anything yeah. I just like doing it yeah. like I get to chat with people yeah. tell stories find jokes and then it's usually with people that I fucking want to learn from right yeah. um, and uh, like uh, kind of put up on on the network just for other people to learn from mm-hmm. too uh, so only recently have been like all right this also can be a source of income yeah. um and hopefully it is so i can yeah. sustain it more yeah right because shit medical insurance oh my god i was <laughs> yeah, looking for yeah. an individual just pay on your own yeah kaiser's like 350 a yeah, month it's expensive. Oh, oh my yeah. god yeah. and then even like dental like they're an okay one is like 40 bucks a month like adds up i was yeah. like oh my god yeah. And even if I've got Medi-Cal, I'm like, I don't know how much this covers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to do jiu-jitsu. Yes. So. Yeah. yeah. And it was when 
when I r- did not have insurance is when I felt started feeling everything <laughs> the body. I was like, Yo, this is my yeah, shit hurt. Hurt. Right? Did you ever see me bug out? Like, yeah. I still got like this bump on my arm I've had for six months. <laughs> then I got my arm fucked up by an arm <laughs> bar. Yeah, yeah like... <sighs> It's crazy. Do you have medical right now? Uh, I have a uh, covered California. So, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, like discount, discounted. Much, yeah, but they still like, paying. That's just in case. Like I'm not taking advantage of it right now because, yeah. yeah, I'm just hoping you know get a job then yeah. figure it out. Yeah. We gotta get you at LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. get me in there, dude. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> I got you, man. <laughs> hey, I got you. Hey, that's what uh, I don't know if you saw that. Our, oh no the job posting I sent no in the I group chat oh I oh see. it was um based like on a reaching out to um what what was the t- term reach? for it no reach? it wasn't reach but uh basically ta- un- underrepresented uh talent oh yeah. and being a person who reaches out to yeah, them yeah and I thought I think you said but you said I think it was um closed already yeah it was it was closed but like um. It'll, well, after I looked at um, that post, like it led to a bunch of other of others. companies. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Hopefully, actually, like there's actually a lot of cool openings in like the social impact sector, which I'm trying to do, but within tech companies, mm. a lot more are doing that. Like Lyft just started like the social good, oh, uh, okay. social impact um, department. Uh, it's not that big. Yeah. Uh, Facebook has a bigger one. It's like. Um, of uh, uh, change for good or something mm, like that. Okay. Yeah, They're LinkedIn d- has LinkedIn for good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, so that's the team that I'm actually currently in. So oh. I'll definitely look at. Oh yeah. Of, yeah, yeah. This, and I appreciate it. Yeah. But it's cool when I see. Uh, that's kind of a more recent thing because mm-hmm. before it was like this corporate social responsibility that was like the technical term in companies before. But now a lot of these companies are doing these social impact, uh, social good departments. Yeah. Um, um, and it's cool to see that they're kind of trying to do a little bit more. Yeah. Like uh, Salesforce has their whole salesforce.org yeah. like that. Um, so, yeah, because I've been looking at those. But also when I do my job hunting now, like a big factor is like, Medical? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 Let me apply. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. This ain't That's super important. <laughs> yeah. I applied to some jobs. I was like, yeah, this isn't exactly what I'm looking for, but they got medical. Oh, this yeah. is good. I like this. I even uh, started looking at the jobs at Kaiser. Uh-huh. I was like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> but just, it better. I applied yeah. to some that's at the UCSF, mm-hmm. um, the their hospital. Nice. I was like, things that kind of overlap. Yeah. If it was also marketing or like uh, community outreach, things like mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, oh, see, now I had some good points <laughs> about going into a hospital. Not bad. Nice. Uh, but it is, it's kind of a, a, a cool process for me to um, kind of pursue because also I have a mixed feeling with school mm-hmm. I've only gone back only after years of being mm-hmm. away from school like mm-hmm. uh, finding community college things like that so I'm not like the biggest fan but I've been able to like maximize the opportunity that's For been sure. available yeah. uh, but even so even with that though like I always have this mixed feeling of going into like corporate mm-hmm. or like where my heart is if I can make money yeah, just doing this, this yeah, shit yeah. right this if, if I can buy my own Medi-Cal yeah. <laughs> eventually <laughs> that's the goal yeah, right to sure. do like alternative forms of income and mm-hmm. passive income but it's all the the trip is being the one learning how to do it mm-hmm. and there's no one in my family who who no, does anything yeah. alternative yep right yep. and so that's that's like the struggle to be the yeah. one like trying things out at the same time all right i right, gotta make income yeah. some other way yeah too yeah. right yeah. yeah so that's why i'm always like trying to ask rich like yo when's that next video coming out because yeah. i know sometimes you know it it's it's like the running challenge like it's a self responsibility mm-hmm. and reflection like okay what's my end goal like, yeah do i want to yeah. do this the rest of my life or do i want to you know achieve you know my dream job or yeah doing what i, I mean i gotta give props to reber because he's the one that's been pushing me to build that content and if it wasn't for him i probably wouldn't make the seven dollars i made on youtube <laughs> uh, <laughs> like dude is I, it seven dollars <laughs> a week well um, i so i just turned on monetization 
uh, last week, huh. and I made seven dollars already. <laughs> so, hey, no, that's so a no, big achievement. Yeah, that's a, dude, I I never thought I would like build like make money off of YouTube because I just felt like it was just so far away. But then Reba was like, "Hey, just, p- just post your videos, even though they fucking suck. Just post it mm, out, mm. get some uh, view times, and so hopefully I'm just gonna keep." Yeah, going. you really didn't like that Robin Hood video. But yeah, I didn't like that Robin Hood video. I was just like, "Yo, dude, you just gotta get it out. Like, yeah. d- don't." Cause you know a lot of people are perfectionists. And, like I'm that. I'm like that too. And like you want everything to be perfect, but at the same time you're like, okay, this should be enough, and I should just you know I'm gonna get better. Like mm. yeah. this isn't the end goal. Where yeah. I'm at right that Robin Hood video he's talking about is uh, I made a video about how I invest as a financial minimalist, and it's using the Robin Hood app, and sh- it shows the stuff that I invest in using Robin Hood. Yeah, yeah. It's a trip when I saw my friend's uh, Robin Hood app when we were like comparing and stuff. I'm like, damn, you got a hell of money in that. <laughs> I'm like, damn, it's not a lot at all. She had like 10 G's and plus. Uh-huh. I was like, damn. And then she was just, hey, yeah, this is my extra money. <laughs> yeah. I was like, damn, that's your extra money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, all you have to do is just put like, if you, if once you start getting paid, just every paycheck, just put a little money yep, yep. every single time because it would be, it's going to work for you rather it being in the savings account and it's so crazy and cool that they now have fractional stocks yeah. Yeah. so you don't have to purchase yeah. full. and i gotta say that's a throw over from crypto yeah like and, and yeah. it's actually a really good transition yeah. i really like that no for sure yeah. i like it too because i was not gonna buy one whole <laughs> tesla stock <laughs> Hell, right. Right. Dude, especially right at 900 that. you would have got yeah. fucked Apple's <laughs> yeah. too. now it's okay now now that yeah. it's dropped i think it's not a bad but that's already still like twice oh that it was like a week ago right yeah at i think it, it was before the three. trend up it was at like 400 Oh damn! Yeah, that's crazy. And you know, there's hell. There's there's people out there with hell of money oh, on that. For right? sure. It's. I think that's been a trip for me to because um, I I've I've been exposed to stocks. My what's funny is my Lola in the Philippines does the Philippine stocks like oh, every sure, day. She does exchange, it old school like yeah, calls her damn. broker. <laughs> she watches like the the on the newspaper. Oh shit! They'll what print the hell? It, yeah, they'll print out the the prices on the newspaper and she's been doing that for a long Damn. time right but the, the the sad part is that we were never taught <laughs> like and i was even telling my talking to my dad i was like huh uh like he's a businessman in the philippines yeah. but i was like you never really talk to us about finances and things like that and then and then he was just like oh you never asked i was like <laughs> <"Ugh."> <laughs> <laughs> just, why didn't you and i think there was a part also like my dad just wanted to provide yeah and just like didn't want to bother us with anything yeah. it's just as long as you're happy yeah right i was like oh the sweet but I yeah. wish I knew more shit earlier yeah. right and yeah. so now it's like oh what's going on what's going on mm-hmm. right and I'm trying to learn a lot more there um, but when I was talking about um, stocks right I never really got into it until crypto yeah. until like learning I was like oh what's the how do you trade what's the thi- yeah. what exchanges things like that and then that it was actually the reverse of from crypto to stocks yeah right yeah, and I that's, that's what I learned people. yeah, 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 uh, yeah more so uh, with stocks and Robin Hood mm-hmm. right and you know what's crazy is that Robin Hood was the first to do the zero commission yeah. and now everyone yeah, has Fidelity it Fidelity it, JP, yeah. Morgan JP Morgan just did the whole like alright no more broker fee like that yeah. it's crazy just yeah. To see the something change, yeah, right? Yeah. Like from the uh, something that's so established, yeah. And norms and hell, of people making hell of money off yeah. of brokerage yeah. fees. I wonder what some of the people were like. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. <laughs> when, when I first had Fidelity, every trade was six dollars. Ah, yeah. So that's why, like, when I purchased, it would have to be at the end of the month. Because I couldn't uh, just like purchase every single day or like yeah. twice, mm-hmm. twice a month. Like at least sizable. Yeah, sizable. Yeah. So every time it would have to be like at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where do you see uh, yourself going in these next few years uh, starting to come to the end? Yeah, right. shoot. Uh, let's see. What uh, One of my goals is before I have a kid, I do kind of, what's the term that you mentioned? Like ret- where you, when you retire young? Fire? Oh, fire. fire. Uh, yeah. Financial, financial independence, age. retire early. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So fire, I yeah. definitely, uh, first, since I joined a new team at LinkedIn, I want to 
see this project go live. The project that we're building is called Underconnected Youth, and it helps connect underconnected youth with compassionate connectors. So what I are compassionate to, connectors? You, compassionate you, connectors are people who want to help these underconnected youth uh, with jobs. So for example, myself, I work at LinkedIn. If there's somebody who's a little, um, like say underprivileged, mm -hmm. I'm the compassionate connector who's helping that person get a job through LinkedIn. So, so is this is the platform you're building an internal uh, LinkedIn no. platform? No, we actually announced it. I want to say about a couple of weeks ago, um, we're building it right now. So it's uh, keep on the lookout for that. It's going to be really awesome. Um, so what I want to do is definitely build this out first. Um, see how this goes. Um, since I'm kind of like the only underconnected youth who's on this plat, or who's building this, I kind of want to like shepherd it and kind of hopefully have it like my baby. And I want to see it yeah, come to yeah, live. Yeah. So um, I want to do that. And then, Hopefully by that time, because this is going to be somewhat a long process, I would love to, you know, if I do have, a, if I do bring a child into this earth, I want to make sure that I'm there for, for him or her. So hopefully I could live off my investment and like retire early. Um, the, the whole reason why I am doing all this investments and all, all these things is so I don't have to worry about it in the future when I have a family. So um, the, those are kind of like my sh my goals. And uh, I always told myself, I think this is like when I was 22, I'm hoping to retire before the age of 35. Ooh. Uh, and I think it's, it's doable. It's doable. You yeah. got seven years. Seven years, yeah. yeah. But then also when you have a kid, man, your money is like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But then so the way, that I, the way that I'm thinking about it is I make a certain amount um, of money every month mm -hmm. if I could get rental properties that could provide me that every month yeah. I'll be okay I just need to live I need to get the same amount of paychecks I get every month and I think I could do that through rental properties yeah that's where it's at yeah. next Graham Stephan huh? <laughs> next Graham Stephan how do you <laughs> you just have a property manager in Vegas yeah I'm a property manager in Vegas uh, yeah so I pay him 10% of what the mortgage of is of the mor mortgage mortgage yeah. Oh. yeah and then he ta he collects the rent and uh, well no no the rent is just it's uh, sent to like my bank account uh. and then uh, before actually before it gets to my bank account he takes the the 10% Oh, uh, okay. And then he handles any property. Yeah. So like, like safe, repair yep. issue. If anything like breaks, I never get called. He gets called. Or if something happens with the tenants, they call him. Not How do me. you find this property manager? He's actually um, a family friend. Oh. Yeah, he's also okay. a realtor. So Out there. He, yeah. So he uh. has like a whole company that, that does this. Mm. Yeah. Are you eyeing more? Oh, yeah. Yeah, in the yeah. same location, different same, state? I think same location because uh, I have a lot of family in Vegas. And I feel like it's probably one of the more booming uh, cities. The Raiders are going to be there. Um, house is very, very cheap. It's close to California. Um, Vegas is there. All the UFC fights are there. Yeah, yeah. You have boxing. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't think there's going to be a, a shortage of people who need, like, houses. Or whatever over there so i think it's uh one of the more booming cities what's the trip is there was this map of the u.s uh per state what is the language that's spoken the most other than english and spanish and nevada was tagalog really because, oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's a big yeah. filipino <laughs> yeah, big uh, filipino because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. also majority a lot of them are like the service industry folks yeah in vegas yeah like, like the in the hospital in the yeah. not hospital but the the hotels yeah things like that yeah All right my uh, aunt's yeah she's a maid over there yeah so i think it's uh nevada hawaii is also a filipino and i think a uh, maine actually there's like a weird really? one maine? yeah there's one weird one in the upper east coast i was like i, I don't know if it's maine or Rhode or something one of those yeah. i was like what the heck no no all the filipinos are out here i need to to do a traveling tour that's what i want to do too yeah. i think that's a next you you might see a project with this podcast uh. as a traveling podcast to visit the different filipino communities Ooh, in different sick. areas right because i've found out there's one in like spain there's Good. like yeah there's like a sizable filipino community in spain the heart of the colonizers yeah i was yeah. like whoa what the <laughs> fuck and then they're there they have like a filipino grocery store mm. things like that and i only 
found that out because uh, somebody from there submitted to the Filipino magazine at uh, Berkeley that I was working at with. Mm. And then I was like, what the fuck is this? So I think there's little pockets. It's like small daily cities. Uh. All, all over the world There's only one daily city There's only right? one daily city, <laughs> <laughs> daily city. <laughs> You know there was a book <laughs> uh, Written about the Filipinos in daily city Oh really? Called Pinoy Capital Yeah Well, well actually that yeah. sounds a little familiar Yeah it's this yellow book um, I, We read it uh, in school And oh. then it's all about daily city Okay This guy named uh, I think something Vergara Benito Vergara or something Wrote it About just the history Of how we all ended up here mm-hmm. um, The nurses or The overflow from SF things like that um, but hopefully it doesn't change that much man no we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it the same <laughs> keep yeah. Filipino keep on educating folks yeah. that's why we need that financial education I think oh yeah for so sure. that more people kind of develop their capacity to stay here mm-hmm. right all right a uh, question that I actually like asking uh, for folks that come on um, what are three pieces of advice that you would give to your younger self? Oh, my younger self. Yeah. All right. Number one, um, do more investing. Invest more. Uh, number two, health is a big thing. So keep, stay healthy. Don't quit jujitsu like uh. all the times that I've done. <laughs> um, and another thing is, Don't quit um, let's see. Uh, another advice that I would give to myself. Uh, I think stay kind. I think being kind is one of the most useful thing. I think being kind is something that even helped me get my job at LinkedIn. I was mm. just a friendly person and I was had a friendly demeanor with the people who are interviewing me. Uh, just stay kind. Mm. Yeah. So invest more. Don't don't quit jujitsu <laughs> yeah. and stay kind. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. What well, do you you consider yourself kind? Do you like um, do you assess? Shoot, I don't know. Am I nice? Yeah, I he's a nice not. guy. He's really approachable. He's <laughs> friendly. Uh, you know. I, I would like to think, but uh, I mean, there are times where I could be an asshole, <laughs> especially to my wife, and I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, say again. Uh, say again. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, but I think generally, I I think what I. I feel like everyone here on earth is given a purpose and I think my purpose is to help like educate oh. and I'm, uh, I think I just found that out right now because being self-centered it won't it doesn't it doesn't provide happiness and I'm that that's something that I was kind of searching during my like downfall of depression is we I, you know, I wasn't I wasn't helping anybody. The only person I was helping was myself. And I think to give help to others is something that brings you happiness. Uh. And I also read that in a book from the da- Dalai Lama, uh. the uh, Art of Happiness. Uh. So being compassionate and uh, giving help to others is what ultimately gives you happiness. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I f- actually feel healthier when I'm doing more community work, <laughs> mm, and like yeah. my mind is clearer. Like yeah. even if it's not like. Like my goals and other aspects of my life kind of become clearer. Yes. Like when I am in service, being able to volunteer more mm-hmm. in these other aspects, it kind of works more synergistically. Yeah. Uh, and then even if my professional goals are not necessarily tied directly, yeah. right? It's like informed and those uh, pro, like, um, those career goals even get yeah. clearer. Yeah. And then when I'm not doing that other shit and I'm just focusing money, money and yeah. on my career, I kind of get like this weird, yeah. like lost kind mm-hmm. of like, I'm like, oh, yeah. what's, is this like really worth it? Like yeah. That. And I, you know, I could attest to that because, um, and sorry if I'm like going over time. No, 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 no. There's no time limit. So, so there was one time where I went to Reno with my cousins and uh, I was playing roulette and I won like $5,000. What? And with that five thousand. What did you bet on? Uh, I bet on a number. Oh, I shit. think number twenty-seven because twenty-seven is my birthday. And I won five thousand dollars, but I only kept five hundred dollars, and I gave the rest to my family members. It was like a uh. big family group, and I felt happier when I gave that money away rather than winning the money. Uh. And it, what's crazy is that the one of uh, one of my cousins that I gave the money to, he was one of my groomsmen, and he did a speech on my on my uh wedding and he brought up that story and it's one of those things where you don't really think about that moment 
um, for a while and he thinks about that moment all the time mm. so like those kind of moments live on forever rather mm. than like say if I kept that $5,000 I probably wouldn't even think about that like if I didn't like if I if it just didn't come up right if I didn't give it away so um, like helping others I think is what ultimately brings me happiness and I think would bring happiness to other people mm. yeah mm, that was beautiful yeah, yeah I felt the same when I used to tutor at City College mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you notice this, but I like sharing like a lot of things. Like if I ever learn something or I'm like, oh, this would be really cool or more about like people learning more about themselves and growing. Because when I was at City and tutoring, like um, I really like because so at City, damn, I'm going to bring this up in my interview. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey, this is good practice Hi, for my interview. Like Let's go. This is good practice. <laughs> so, um, well, I mean, also, like, as you brought up earlier in high school, like, I felt like at, I won't drop the name yeah. of the high school, but uh, <laughs> I felt like we were never, um, like, I don't know, like, something to pursue after high school. Mm. Like, I don't know if that's how... Like, like given a goal or something? Yeah, yeah, like nobody, like, you know, there were some people who went to college and stuff. Um, most people went to Skyline or ended up, like, working normal jobs. And, but it wasn't like, hey, um, there's different career choices in the world. Like, here's a lot of options, you know, that you can choose. It's not just like, oh, become a doctor or, yes, you know, yeah. a teacher or something. So that's what I feel like. LinkedIn has a lot of opportunity to do because it's all about, you know, um, networking and opening up opportunities. And so I feel like if the school system integrated something or like, you know, had something to do with LinkedIn, um, that would be like a really good opportunity for, you know, people who went to high schools who weren't as prestigious. Because like I know people from just Millbrae and like, when I hear what they learn and like their whole curriculum, like it's crazy how mm. that's also a public school mm -hmm. and it's only 15 minutes away from here, but they're learning like all this like other shit that yeah. I never like thought of or, you know, opportunities. And mm. um, yeah, so like from mentoring, that's what I really got out of it was like spreading knowledge and helping people succeed in, you know, whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is that idea of the educational or knowledge capital, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're given, you're exposed to like things that even when we're talking about investing or financial literacy or you were just saying like the mentality of setting goals or of having something after high school. Like, yeah, there are some high schools that are not like exposing yeah. kids to that. Yeah. Like, and they're very underfunded and that maybe you'll have pockets of kids who are like, or who are striving for something more, but yeah. then they might not have access to Europe, mm -hmm. right? Or, or Boys and Girls Club or these uh, like, like opportunities to like push past the status quo that's there and it's so and it's it's a trip for me when you bring that up about the high school because i went from a a closed campus low-income high school in la where like they would check the cars driving out during lunch like because only the upperclassmen could leave mm -hmm. right and it was closed right then i go to palo alto high right across stanford oh yeah and there's like an open campus people come in second third period because they don't have like first round. i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> yeah. and then they're all walking out during lunch and like going across the street you can you can go out i was just like <laughs> like and just and it was a public school yeah that's when i realized i was like whoa there are disparities yeah. of like yeah. public school that you're getting this especially in berkeley because you know you're exposed to so many people coming from different schools yeah, yeah. you're like wow like you know i i don't want to sound like you know <laughs> and there's a lot of people that had worse situations than me but it made me really feel like shit like I actually applied to this uh one like mentoring program I got in but uh I just it, you've heard me say this before I don't like being like the poster boy of like certain organizations just because I was brought up in circum circumstances um 
I like to be an inspiration, but I don't want to be like the poster mm-hmm. child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel it. The, I think this, uh, I realized it also when I was helping interview folks for the student org I was part of in uh, Berkeley. And we were um, interviewing the next year, right? Mm-hmm. The people who would be taking the positions. And I realized, man, there would, some would, there would be such a big disparity between some folks who are very well-spoken and they might have come from better educational background and they're like uh, very clear and succinct about them answering questions. And then there was another one who's same year, right? Just, but from a lower income, more rural area. And they were struggling just with the same basic interview questions. And like yeah. almost I would have to kind of guide and like get, be supportive in there and it's just just the awareness of not knowing what to do in certain situations right maybe because they're the the first generation in college even mm-hmm. right and it's this it's a disparity they're both filipino and they're <laughs> but one f- from like more of a higher income background and area another one from like rural mm-hmm. like rural california oh, like yeah. this is still there bro <laughs> yeah. Yeah. all right so funny story is uh like uh, I won't say where, but I got like an internship offer office the the <laughs> offer at this one place. So I went in to interview, and you know the basic like, oh, so tell me about yourself. And like the dumbass I was, I was like, oh yeah, you know, um, I'm on the boxing team, <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh fuck, <laughs> like I don't know how to answer this. What do you want me to say? Yeah. But it was. It was a big, you know, learning curve because, uh, uh, you know, like uh. you were saying, like some people learn how to like speak a certain way and some people learn how to like, you know, talk about certain things, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to jobs. So. Yeah. yeah, It's almost like a, a, you're speaking in code sometimes yeah. when you're in uh, certain job interviews, if you drop the certain phrase mm-hmm. and uh, sh- it shows that you understand certain norms, mm-hmm. things like that. And it's kind of crazy because I was reading um, a little study on highly competitive law firms. And there are some that really talk about just word choice, uh, how certain word uh, phrases kind of are indicative of kind of like the inner club and like that, how that's all affected their hiring process and who gets hired and all that stuff. But yeah, man, that's why I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> any uh podcasting uh skull and bone organizations <laughs> let me get in on that well, what's the code joe rogan <laughs> let's do it uh so thank you for coming on no, do you have you any shout outs any uh shout outs uh shout out to you thank you queer chris for having me on we've got to have you on my podcast so i do have a podcast myself it's called being rich uh you could type in being rich or rich bustos i'll be the first person to show up um instagram at rich bustos twitter rich b r i i c h b and then i have a blog called rich bustos.com and again thank you no problem shout out to the podcast because i bought the matcha from minimalist is it Min- oh, minimal yeah, matcha minimal, oh nice, yeah i bought nice. the matcha it's good <laughs> Ooh, yeah, i don't dude, have my whole quality. setup yet about with the whisk so mine oh, is God. a little clumpy no but when high I quality do though yeah it's good i ended up yeah. liking it um yeah. when i was kind of transitioning off coffee like a week or two uh, ago i was like doing a matcha i was like oh, okay this helps with the caffeine yeah. withdrawal uh, but yeah. i'm back on, ca- on coffee though today <laughs> i love coffee, <laughs> I love coffee. <laughs> um, I have to oh I have to shout out Ballast Coffee in West Portal Filipino Ooh. owned and they import beans from the Philippines Ooh. which uh, Baraco beans where it's a specific um, style of bean mm-hmm. high more caffeine mm-hmm. in it uh, good cold brew from over there uh, so hopefully y'all can sponsor me <laughs> Ooh, let's do it uh, Kev uh, you want to give your um, handles uh, or anything yeah, uh, so Instagram at Kevin Reber, K E V I N R E B as in boy, E R. <laughs> um, uh, anybody out there looking for a front end engineer, you know, hit me uh, up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for being guest. Thank Kev. you. Thank you. <laughs>